with in-person presentations. I sincerely hope that the scholarly deliberations and presentations made in this online session would be highly beneficial and meaningful vis-a-vis -vis the higher education scenario. On that note of hope, may I now request Dr. Lilakanta Borthakur Sir, Principal, Morigao College, to kindly deliver the welcome address. Please, sir. I request principal sir to kindly deliver the welcome address. Oh. Dr. Sardas. I think some participants have uh, switched on their mics. Kindly mute yourself. Kankan Jyoti Nath, kindly mute your mics. So you're not properly audible. Your voice is breaking, sir. So you're not properly audible, actually. Your voice is breaking. Yes, yes, it's better now, sir. Now it is, is it okay now? Yes, it is okay, sir. Can I continue? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Is it okay now? Yes, sir, we are waiting for you. Yes, sir, it, it's, it's okay. You can continue, sir. We are waiting to listen to you. PG College, Ballavgar, Haryana, and a member of Bhutanay Council, Nath. Tadhan Kolya, Coordinator IQC, Morigam College. Seminar <coughs> There is a Faculty problem members. with his network, I think. It is a great pleasure to have your presence here in this online session on the second day of the national seminar. Morigao College was declared a district in the year 1989. It is bounded by the mighty Brahmaputra on the north, Karbi Umlong district on the south, Nagao district on the east, and the Kamrup district on the mm -hmm. west. Culturally, it is a rich heritage center of the Tiwa tribe which forms the majority of the population of the world. is endowed with a natural resources, rivers, water bodies, bills, hills, and forests. King, Kalong, and the Kopili rivers flow through the southern part of the district. There are three rare forests recognized under Assam Forest Regulation in 1891. There is also a wildlife sanctuary named the Provitora famous for Indian one-horned dinosaurs. The Saran Hill is a large wetland situated five kilometers away from Morino town. Sites of uh, historical importance include the Devsal Temple, Baba Ganesh Thala, rock inscription at the Brahmayam, while Bhagara was a star. Public 
59 years education in the region. Since its inception, in the first decade, the college imparted education in art system only. The science system was introduced in 1985 to open up and education in the So there is an issue with your network. Uh, however, uh, yeah. So would you please kindly conclude? I think we can hear you now. Kindly conclude the welcome address so that we can move ahead with the session. I could not complete the, my welcome address properly due to technical problems. Can I continue? I could not complete the my welcome address properly. Anyway, okay. So, uh, there is there is an issue with his. Uh, So kindly mute. I would like to continue with the session. Uh, thank you so much, Principal Sir. Although we could not uh, hear you properly, but uh, but I could understand his feelings. Yes, yes, that yes, sir. So I think we should continue uh, without much ado because it's already time. So anyway, uh, thank you so much, Principal Sir, for delivering the welcome address. Although it was not uh, clearly audible, um, so. Let us move forward, and I would now take the pleasure to welcome and introduce the chairperson and the resource person of this session. I'm very pleased to welcome Dr. Dhananjay Kushre, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Zoology, Morigao College, as the chairperson of this session. Good morning, Good morning. sir, Good morning. and thank you so much Good for morning. being here. The resource person of this technical session is a dynamic personality, an able leader, and a visionary in his quest towards excellence in higher education. I feel honored beyond words to introduce to all colleagues, participants, and paper presenters, Dr. Krishan Kant Gupta, Principal, Agarwal PG College, Ballabgar, Haryana, and a member of General Council, Nak Bengaluru. Dr. Gupta, has teaching and administrative experience of more than 32 years, with more than 13 dedicated years as the principal of Agarwal PG College. A doctorate in physics, Dr. Krishan Kant is an outstanding researcher with more than 325 research publications in international and national journals and conferences. For academic and research pursuits, he has traveled widely to Asian countries as well as beyond the continent. Dr. Krishan Kant has been a part of peer team experts for assessment and accreditation of HEIs by NAC. He is a member of various statutory bodies in different universities and has, to his credit, been awarded the Best Principal Award, National Education Excellence Award by the Honorable Governor of Haryana thrice and the Vice-Chancellor of MD Rotak 
MD University, Rotak. Dr. Krishan Kant is endowed with a vision to make quality and excellence the motto of higher education institutions in India. It is uh, really difficult to sum up his achievements uh, and uh, leadership prowess in a few lines. However, I must mention here that Dr. Krishan Kant shares a very close relationship with Morigao College. In the third cycle of its accreditation by NAC in the year 2019, the college had Dr. Krishan Kant as one of the peer team members. In spite of his very busy and tight schedule, Sir has been very generous to us to have accepted this invitation. We are extremely fortunate to have you here again with us, Sir, and we are eagerly waiting for you to start today's lecture as a resource person of this session. It is over to you, sir. This uh, virtual platform is all yours, and we are all ears. Please, sir, take over. Thank you, Dr. Sharda Sri Chaudhary ji, for such nice words. It's at my the, honor, sir. At the outset, I thank the Honorable Principal, Dr. Leela Kant Barthakur ji, uh, the coordinator IQAC and convener of this uh, very important conference. Ranjit Kumar Kalitaji, Joint Coordinator, Dr. Arunima Sharma. Of course, Dr. Sharda Chaudhary, who could rope me in on this platform, though online. And the most important, the chairman of the session, my friend Dhananjay Khushreji. 2019, almost three and a half years back, I visited your esteemed institution as a peer team member, as Dr. Sharda Sri Chaudhary was talking about, and the memories are as fresh even today. When she called me, sir, we are organizing this two-day conference uh, sponsored by NEC, and I want you to speak. Immediately, I accept the offer, and it's an opportunity for me to, to speak in this two days uh, uh, national conference. I congratulate the organizers because the topic of the conference, quality enhancement and quality sustenance in higher education institutions, is very important. Uh, please request the audience participants to mute their mics. The word quality, it has been talked, it has been talking, and it will continue to be talked in all arenas. Maybe it is the industry, or it is the higher education institutions, and even the schools and universities. Because quality, as we all know, it is not a destination where you once reach, it is finished. It is an unending, never-ending journey. And when you reach and you achieve your goal, your quest to do more and more comes into picture. And every institution, whatsoever the size and dimensions, location, and other demographic dividends, aspires to be a quality institution. So from that point of view, the title of the conference is very well thought of, and the organizers deserve all the praise for that. In my presentation, I would like to deliberate and tell about what, why, how, and when about the quality. In fact, what I feel Quality, it is an assurance, it is a culture and process through which it is ensured, the institution ensures that the passing out graduates are useful. This is a very important word. The graduates, they have to be useful, useful to the institution, useful to the society, useful to the industry useful to various stakeholders and they should contribute constructively 
in societal development and national development and for that the standards are maintained and even improved in higher education institutions what is quality it is an ever elusive and evolving omnipotent and ubiquitous everybody wants it every institution wants it so it has to be and it is ubiquitous as my title suggested pathways for making a difference quality assurance in higher education institutions pathways for making a difference so what difference do we really want to make higher education has a purpose there is a difference purpose of higher education and higher education with a purpose so i think higher education with a purpose is more important or mission underpinning national and societal development through skilled manpower through producing competent and qualified graduates to meet the organizational needs in all sectors pushing forward the frontier of knowledge via innovation and research meaning that quality is implicitly and explicitly about the outputs and outcomes of use that is fit for some purpose this is a very important sentence the outputs and outcomes they have to be fit for some purpose the stakeholders of the provider and the user the move forward towards improvements for innovations the actions and activities in doing something what is quality quality is system improvement it is not a one shot affair that i do it today it will remain there for a longer period it is not a one shot affair it is not a destination as i told you rather an ending journey slow and steady quality is not an act it is a habit quality is a matter of choice quality is a matter of conviction quality is a certitude different institutions as i told you in the beginning depending upon their location depending upon their geographical conditions their resources available the meaning and the dimensions they change in the context and perspective of quality its meaning dimensions the prospective and perspective plans of the institution which they develop for maintaining and improving quality and implementing framework change with the scenario milieu and the environment what is the purpose purpose is quality is conformance to mission vision objectives and standards accountability quality is optimal use of resources and delivery of accurate educational products and services transformative point of view quality is positive change in student learning experience and professional and personal development rankings and reputation quality is achievement of distinction and exclusivity through the fulfillment of high standards perception and brand sometimes people say when this neck inspection assessment and accreditation come what shall we get when we get assessed and accredited so the most important is the perception about the institution change and the institution is established as a brand so quality helps the people in making and changing the perception of people about the institution and promotes the institution and teachers as brand i firmly believe the institution is also a brand and the teacher is also a brand but we have to establish it so these are some of the perspectives again definition of quality as i told you in the beginning that the meaning of this concept is different from country to country from stakeholder to stakeholder from institution to institution from individual to individual quality in an organization means knowing your stakeholders understanding and meeting their needs this is very important what is quality quality is understanding the needs and meeting the needs and even better exceeding their expectations both now and in the future so what are the various stakeholders and the two main definitions if in brief i tell you quality fitness for purpose satisfying consumer expectations so these are some of the stakeholders for uh, when we refer to higher education institutions 
students are the customers industry and society are the beneficiaries parents are the investors and faculty as service providers and once the faculty are the service providers so we cannot say no in any situation since we are the service providers the other ones can be the fund providers taxpayers state and community users of products and services users of outputs like graduates which are passing out from the institutions employees of the sector itself quality notions and their realization through how to realize quality so as i told you the stakeholders satisfaction value for money and return on investments transformation in the students excellence and fitness for purpose and it is a chain reaction and it is a collective responsibility starting from the teachers the academic leaders management society students graduates government administrators policy makers and institutions when they come together they keep together they work together then a path is paved for the sustenance and enhancement of quality in higher education institutions quality assurance how to define quality assurance part of quality management focused on providing confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled for higher education the totality of planning and implementation principles and their documentation for education research and development societal contributions and administrative processes of an institution which are developed in compliance both with the mission and goals of the institution and with national needs and international standards and the basic principles a quality assurance system should be in compliance with the mission vision strategic goals and objectives it should be in compliance with its declared quality policy processes should be managed in concordance with institutional values and goals the principles definition and job descriptions for all the processes should be in written form performance indicators should be well defined pdca and pdsa in the next slide i will tell you the details about these two loops should be iterated repeatedly for continuous improvement institution wide in all processes last but not the least the success of a quality assurance system is closely related to institutional continuity leadership and organizational culture these are the quality assurance basic structures quality assurance is not a science but common sense instruments are important but right attitude attitude is very very important in realizing realizing this is much more important quality assurance is a responsibility of everybody quality assurance should be part of the overall policy and management to so strategic plan performance indicators and quality policies they collectively make the quality assurance in an institution and the key to success is systematic monitoring of the implementation of the strategic plan via performance indicators evaluation of results with stakeholders and improvement what we do uh, in most of the cases that this monitoring part and evaluation part comes only when we go for nec but it is too late so what we have to do that this monitoring and the evaluation it should be a continuous process in higher education institutions so that we can come to know our strength weaknesses opportunities and challenges and we can work upon them and the basic tool is the pdca in all the processes p is the plan d is the do c is check and a is act plan do check and act and sometimes with check there is one more word that is a study so that we call as the pdsa cycle and this is very important quality assurance at higher education institutions there are nine m factors which are very very important the first one is the men that is the human resource the materials the machines and the equipments the management of course methods measurements motivation money and markets further eight r factors right qualification framework that is the teachers which are appointed in the institution they should be qualified they should be committed and dedicated 
right infrastructure right faculty right learning resources in terms of the learning management system and other online resources available right delivery mechanism availability of resources is important but the delivery in the right manner is much more important right encouragement for research and consultancy depending upon the resources available right programs for institution specific staff development and right mechanism for internal quality assurance since your college will be going for fourth cycle in the time to come so the internal quality assurance cell iqac it is a major component and the main advisory body in any higher educational institutions who recommends and suggest measures for quality enhancement so this iqac it should not be a formality it has to be very very proactive in the institution quality cycle quality does not happen by accident it has to be planned we do not have to have quality as a goal survival is not compulsory quality is not any single thing but an aura an atmosphere and overpowering feeling that the institution is doing everything with excellence feeling is very very important and there has to be a continuing improvement this is what quality cycle is and for continuous improvement just see this this is a graph sloping upward on the x axis it is the time on the y axis it is improvement in quality and the standards they are moving up from uh, bottom to top so iterating pdca plan do check and act self learning self improving and self correcting systems have to be there for continuous improvement in quality in the educational institution continuous improvement means to be running to be stationary this is a very good picture which make you understand how to run to be stationary there are three things upper 10th percentile bulk in which majority of the institutions fall and lower 10th percentile so just see if you are in the upper 10th percentile so you have to running hard to remain in this group if you are in the bulk running harder to join those who are ahead if you are in the lower 10th percentile running hard to survive now the choices of the academic leaders the teachers and the institution whether you want to be in the upper 10th percentile or you want to be in the bulk and the most important is the discipline of continuous important and this is again a cycle which you are seeing learn integrate approach and deploy why quality is important why everybody is talking about quality and you know in the academic arena there are two buzzwords these days one is the quality and other is the skill and third one if you count that is the uh, self reliance atmanirbharta ki jo baat kar rahe hain with the advent of nep 2020 in our country so why quality is important it makes the students capable of contributing their best in both individual and community developments it focuses on the social mental physical emotional cognitive and economic development of every learner is irrespective of their race ethnicity gender geographical location or socio economic status why quality assurance is important quality assurance helps to ensure that organizations create holistically developed graduates and it is the sole responsibility of the organizations also that meet and even exceed the needs and expectations of consumers and customers graduates equipped with and laden with desired course outcomes program outcomes and program specific outcomes result in satisfied customers whether it is society industry or investors which can result in customer loyalty with enhanced progression and placements funding and advocacy for your brand your organization or the manpower so both are very very important quality is important quality assurance is important and to have quality in the institution what we need to have in the institution assurance and for that we have to adopt adapt adapt and act what we have to adopt in the next slide i will show you 
there are certain best practices which are available in every institution so what we have to do we have to identify the strength we have to identify the best practices even from other institutions improvise them as per our resources as per our conditions and implement them in our own institution culture content and check has to be there displays and efforts are very very important you are making efforts but the, if they are not displayed in the institution the impact is less feather flocking this is very very important the like minded people the people who understand the concept the people who have a vision who have a mission that quality should sustain in our institution they should flock together gurus the teachers have a very very important role and finally we have to convert and we have to develop a feeling among the students and the employees that we have to change from human being to being human and for that the idea and the intent is very very important friends everybody dreams speaks talks wants proclaim preach about quality har aadmi sapna leta hai yes quality honi chahiye baatcheet bhi karte hain aapas mein charcha bhi karte hain uska uh, manchon se bhashan bhi dete hain that quality should prevail but very few chase and practice it and that is why it is hardly realized in institutions and they run as usual intent and content is very important unless we have the intent unless we have the content quality we cannot and we should not talk about quality first we have to have the intent and content and then the honest efforts can be made i was telling you that we have to identify the best practices then we have to implement after implementation it they should reflect from the institution working institutionalization internalization and dissemination is very very important or for these best practices what best practices we have to identify we have to implement an academic leader that is the principal of the college or the teacher they should have answers to these questions what why when whom where and how and if you have clear cut understanding of these questions and you have replies to this question in your mind no one can stop you in establishing a quality culture quality assurance quality policy in your institution and the most imp more important is to sensitize various stakeholders and the hcis to replicate and learn from the best practices prevailing in other institutions individual values and institutional values collectively make institutional efficacy quality it it is reflected from the results the academics the culture the extracurricular and co-curricular activities including sports and research quality of product is decided by the quality of process input process and output what is the input in our higher education institutions input is the students which we get at the time of uh, onset of the session process process is to which the students are subjected to so that they graduate from the institution and output output is again the students unfortunately in our country we are following the factory model of education factory in factory the raw material come it has the same behavior no difference it is subjected to a standard process and the output come the product come is sent to the market and it is used but when it comes to higher education institutions wherein we are getting students they cannot be considered as a raw material because we have advanced learners we have moderate learners we have slow learners but we are treating them as a raw material and that is why the situation is like this this majority of the students they are unemployable and so many cynical soundings are there when we discuss in groups in uh, educational institutions so quality assurance and quality control are paramount to an organization's long term success failing which the institutions are either closed or become sick and uh, everybody knows it that thousands and thousands of engineering college in our country has been closed down maybe because of that that they could not 
assure quality they could not maintain quality they could not control quality so maintaining controlling assuring quality is very very important so this system this has led to the deterioration of the uh, graduates which are coming from our institutions factory model and focusing on rote learning this is a very vicious cycle we compel the students to cram then appear in the exam write the answer sheet then when again he comes to the next semester again we compel him to forget what he's learned in the previous semester and again we compel him to cram uh, the next semester content but what happens this system is testing our memory only and it is absolutely mark focused where is the awareness where is the critical thinking understanding analytical skills for the holistic development of students that is missing and this is the real picture you must be realizing it the purpose of education should be education with a purpose but what actually is happening if a teacher says i will teach you concept of physics nobody wants to go to him but if a teacher says i will teach you how to get 90 plus in physics there is a long queue and crowd so this is the real story and the real picture of our education system these days this is mark centric approach and package centric approach so wh uh, what is the uh, overall result of this system we become part of the crowd and someone has rightly said bheed ka hissa banoge to bheed ban jaoge bheed ka hissa banne se acha hai bheed hone ka karan bano don't be part of the crowd be the reason so that the crowd is behind you and i personally believe that the most successful person who can pull people or crowd after him this is when you convert your signature into autograph and for that the individual efforts will work but if we work collectively in an institution open hand versus closed fist practical application for progress and we have to convert we have to change this feeling that i am doing it change a feeling from i to we and when i is replaced by we in illness it becomes wellness so caring sharing hand holding cooperation coordination collaboration with healthy competition is very very important for the progress and sustenance of quality in any higher education institutions i personally believe that the educational institutions should not be island of excellence if morigam college have certain usp it should be shared with the nearby colleges and if in the nearby colleges there are certain good things they should be brought in in your own institution so this caring sharing and hand holding is very very important it has been talking in details in the national education policy 2020 why quality is required so the higher education opportunity is not confirmed to all deserved aspirants yes all those who deserve to uh, get higher education they may not be getting it but privatization widespread expansion increased autonomy to higher educational institutions and introduction of programs in new and emerging areas have improved access to higher education this is effect at the same time it is also led to widespread concerns on the quality and relevance of the higher education institutions have come up the students are getting chance to read to get admission but simultaneously there is a widespread concern on the quality and probably in the next slide i will show you it was the reason that nec national assessment accreditation council bengaluru was established as a result of the recommendations of uh, nep 1986 what were the findings and program of action 1992 so these are the facts rote learning mark centric package centric approach domain knowledge is focused more than the other skills we are focusing on intelligent quotient then where is the physical spiritual moral emotional environmental and employer quotient we forget we don't focus much on that lack of social awareness only degrees ug and pg i always say this degree is a piece of paper Uh, and it is a certificate that this much of money you have spent in getting this piece of paper it is like a passport but the students are not able to get visa because they not do not have the right kind of skills no jobs 
this is very important but do they learn we teach but do they learn or is our teaching only labor without delivery when we discuss in groups in the educational institutions the cynical sounding question is sometimes heard in educational discussions consider the following kind of survey findings seventh standard students cannot read a fourth standard text yeah it is a fact numerical skills are poor in school children citation index of indian research so poor entries 65% colleges are below b plus in nec assessment and accreditation 75% engineers are unemployable no indian university in the first 200 world rankings teacher quality is deplorable 80% of the science research has no social relevance these are annual findings over the last several years though we had once upon a time nalanda takshila world class centers when we had these world class centers where in the students from abroad come to learn then where this rich legacy has lost this we need to think <clears throat> and this is a world development report it states there is a acute crisis of outcomes crisis of quality and crisis of values in the students so as academic leaders and teachers we have to seriously think on this so that we can address to these problems so because these problems were there quality was a issue this neck was established uh, it was a result of the recommendation of nep 1986 and program of action 1992 and not neck evaluates the institutions for its conformance to the standards of quality and in that there is a premium on both quality and quantity quantity is the increased access in which uh, Uh, dr sharda shri was talking about the inclusiveness the affordability the accessibility and quality relevance and excellence and academic program of education offered in the country for the overall development as you all know the nec uh, assesses and accredits the institutions on seven criteria but fortunately now the ease of uh, doing assessment and accreditation is there the uh, metrics number of metrics have been significantly reduced to 55 and the benchmarks they have been disclosed so now the institutions can have preparations in a better way because everything is now disclosed and is very transparent and this neck assessment is very very important compulsory also because there have been letters from university grant commissions at times and news items in the newspapers so it is very very important so assessment accreditation audit and evaluation this is very very important to sustain quality in your institution because it tells you about what is the institution trying to do how is the institution trying to do how does the institution know it works how does the institution change in order to improve so in order to know and address all these issues these assessment accreditation audit and evaluation is very very important these are the various kind of audits which the institution can go ahead and these are some of the things where the students can be sensitized this is nec model of quality you know this is a nest and the birds are flying in different directions taking the uh, straws and coming back to the nest so like in the iqac in any higher education institution whatever good things you find at any place you take it you collect it and bring it to iqac so that a beautiful nest can be formed or a culture of quality can be established in the higher education institution this is a very good slide internal quality assurance system if you have a right kind of proactive internal quality system then it boosts your energy it provides you strength cat looking like a lion so what matters most is how you see yourself friends people talk this way that way but i tell you there are no secrets to success it is the result of preparation hard work and learning from failure sometimes we uh, try to do like this what cannot be cured must be endured neck can neither be cured nor be avoided so we have to endure it so the best way to prepare for the assessment is to read 
understand and implement the concepts and requirements of the national education policy 2020 i am aware that preparing for assessment is like pulling the mammoth chariot of lord jagannath only the vice principal or the vice chancellor in university cannot do it each and every stakeholder has to extend their hands for comprehensive preparation of the ssr and the peer team visit mind it no nariyal no flowers no shawls no mementos are to be kept even in sight true involvement and honest approach are the only way to get a deserving grade i am aware that nec usually gives less than we desire and more than we deserve satisfaction and preparation for the next assessment alone are the proper ways we have to always keep these sentences these words or these feelings in our mind before going to neck but what actually is happening we are running behind the grades not behind the quality so run behind quality process and not behind metrics sometimes in the chase of jam and jerry jerry always wins you know why jam runs for food but jerry runs for life so the purpose is more important what you are doing so the purpose of any higher education institution is quality sustenance of quality enhancement of quality and for that we should make efforts so purpose of education or education with a purpose nurturing students creativity holistically for addressing the worldwide challenges and concerns and becoming long lasting learners and responsible students through a pragmatic paradigm based on conceive believe and achieve is very very important and the real purpose of education is to make every human to be a better person with love for oneself others and for the nation we must understand that a child is not a vase to be filled but a fire to be lit ye hamesha hame apne dhyan mein rakhna chahiye education should aim at building a new society of love justice equality and peace it is the lamp which should kindle the fire in preparation for the adventures of life and to face any kind of situation with confidence knowledge driven society is there knowledge driven economy is there as of now where skill and values are currency this the students should understand and the purpose of education or education with a purpose or the sustenance and enhancement of quality will help you in ascertaining all these 12 qualities which i personally believe you can just see all these qualities and the last one is the be vocal for local and everybody is talking about this and the purpose of education should be to educate we only focus on educate as of now but the purpose should be to educate to encourage to enlighten to empower and to make them employable and we should understand that education not for living but for लाइफ ये जीने के लिए नहीं है बल्कि जीवन के लिए है एजुकेशन एंड नाउ लुकिंग इन टू दिचुएशन देर इज ए वेक अप कॉल फॉर रेगुलेटरी बॉडीज पॉलिसी मेकर डोमेन एक्सपर्ट मल्टीलेटल एजेंसीज ओपिनियन मेकर इंडस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट एकेडमिक लीडर्स टीचर्स बिकॉज देर इज ए वेकअप कॉल आई थिंक दैट इज वाई दिस मोरीगांव कॉलेज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस टू डेज नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस बिकॉज अनलेस वी टॉक फ्रॉम वेरियस प्लेटफॉर्म about the issues how shall we sensitize the people so quality has become a buzzword in the academic arena and what nep is saying let us make our students holistically developed and self reliant it is a no, it is not a new sentence maybe several decades ago swami vivekanand talked about this that education should be where the strength of mind is increased character is formed intellect is expanded and it makes one to stands on its own feet this is what actually the nep 2020 is saying now so the, there has been there has been a undercurrent in the country in the air and in the minds of the leaders and the teachers but i think the efforts were not to the level they were expected access equity quality affordability accountability it has to be there for all the students all the inhabitants residents of our country so the basic thing what nep is expecting is that output to bahut ho gaya now the focus should be on outcome quantity kafi ho gaya now the focus should be on quality and from academic development we have to focus on the holistic development of students 
where in the students have knowledge skill capacity competence and values and for that the role of teachers and educators is very important this is not the first time that some education policy has come in the picture this is the evaluation 1986 also there was a policy and uh, this uh, nep 2020 it has already been launched on 29th july 2020 but i would like to share this kothari commission report 1966 long back and the first sentence is the future of india is being shaped in our classrooms can you see what kind of responsibility was given to the teachers the future of india is being shaped in our classrooms but could we do it we should ask ourselves and similarly now the nep has come but friends i agree that it is a vision document but its success depend on its effective implementation otherwise it will remain as a vision document and who bears the onus we we the teachers we are the real implementers but the big question is that are we really prepared and have the requisite skill to navigate that we have to think and for implementation we have to prepare the perspective plan the institutional development plan strategic plan with defined timeline or for this the academic leaders the teachers the students the stakeholders all as a team should anticipate what changes are required we have to adopt those changes we have to adapt to those changes we have to make ourselves skilled adapt innovate invent and implement and if we have to realize and actualize the transformation which are expected in nep 2020 then we have to make solid and strong determination kisi ne theek kaha hai vikalp rahit sankalp there should be no alternative vikalp rahit sankalp se hi shakti aur shakti se siddhi ki prapti hoti hai now nep has already advanced in our country and the winds of changes are blowing but again you have choice when the winds of change blow some find shelters and some make windmills choice is yours as academic leaders i think we as academic leaders and teachers we should not find shelters we should make windmills two things are very very important niyat what are your intentions niti what is the policy if the niyat or niti aapki dono theek hai to the destiny will be good it is for sure now we have two choice we cannot become what we need to be by remaining what we are today it is a fact if it were left to us we would all stay safely inside our comfort zone but important is the be the change you wish to see in the world this is very very important and this is a very good picture starting from cocoon to butterfly be the change what you want to see in your students as the students emulate you it is not necessary to stay up to date it is very important to stay update never stop learning cultivate the desire for self directed lifelong learning develop interesting course material and learning materials and ensure proper delivery and communication in the classroom that will ensure quality avoid ye bahut important hai aap kuch log hasenge bhi ispe avoid celebrating the silver jubilee of your notes we are not changing our notes we are not updating our knowledge so please avoid celebrating the silver jubilee of your notes update yourself dekh kar dikhaiye pad kar padhaiye sun kar sunaiye samajh kar samjhaiye seekh kar sikhaiye aur samjhaiye padhana important nahi hai sikhana important hai एंड जब आप सिखाते हैं विद्यार्थी को तो जीवन भर वो उसको भूलता नहीं है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप ड्राइविंग पढ़ना नहीं चाहते हैं आप ड्राइवर सीखना चाहते हैं तो वेन यू गो टू द एक्सपर्ट वो आपको पढ़ाता नहीं है वो आपको सिखाता है एंड वंस यू लर्न इट थ्रू आउट लाइफ यू डोंट फॉर गेट इट तो एज ए टीचर वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट हमें बच्चों को पढ़ाना नहीं है हमें बच्चों को सिखाना है और सिखाने में भी आपने क्या ध्यान रखना है डोंट फोकस ओनली ऑन मेटेरियल नॉलेज दैट इज एकेडमिक्स प्लीज गिव इट ए फ्लेवर ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज आल्सो इफ मेटेरियल नॉलेज इज इम्प्रोवाइज विद द स्पिरिचुअल नॉलेज देन द स्टूडेंट्स हैव ए ग्रेट लाइफ क्वालिटी लाइफ दे इंप्रूव 
they grow through life like cocoon to butterfly and there is a transformation on the other hand if you give them only material knowledge you focus on marks you focus on package only domain knowledge only intelligent quotient then they have only great lifestyle but it doesn't do anything to their inner systems they have no quality they have quantity to show they are stressed depressed oppressed but still well dressed instead of improving they try to prove to the world instead of growing through life they go through life a very beautiful picture starting from dood ki bottle going up to uh, glucose bottle and instead of transformation there is an information so as a teacher as a academic leader you have to think that whether we want to develop holistically our students so that there is a great life quality improvement growing through life and transformation or just we want to um, give them material knowledge what actually is happening quality in higher education institution how do we see it it is a very popular story there are some blind people they have entered in a hall and there is a elephant standing over there and they were asked how the elephant look like somebody is saying it's like a fan wall this 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 if we do it like this then quality culture cannot be sustained and enhanced so we have to take it holistically in a comprehensive and wholesome way understanding the concept developing the mindset building an attitude that is very very important so there is a strong need to address these challenges uniquely now every problem has two solutions hindi mein shabd wahi hai bhag lo ya bhag lo choice is yours either you want to run away or you want to participate and for that you have to building an attitude thinking out of the box developing an ecosystem see this figure in which there is a broken egg it is coming from inside the force is from inside and the life is beginning but if we put pressure on the egg from outside it will break and the life will end so it is very very important that the attitude is beginning from the within in, uh, or it is from the outside so inner uh, developing it from the inside is very very important and we have to do the smart work not hard work hard work or smart work ye figure maine isme rakhi hai now the meaning is changing the concepts are changing so we have to change the stories also old crow thirsty crow now why he will bring pebbles put in the pitcher water level will come up and it will drink water and fly away he will simply purchase a straw from the market will put in the pitcher drink water and uh, fly away so this is how we have to work smart not hard and the most important is we have to talk to ourselves sometime who am i whose am i and what am i this is a figure which i like the most a chain is only as strong as its weakest link yeah this is a hard fact so what are the various parameters i have listed the seven parameters uh, on which the neck assessment and accreditation is done so you see these are the vital and crucial academic and administrative components in any educational institution that require meticulous planning and responsible execution chiefly through teamwork and coordination for the sustenance and enhancement of quality where any one of these receives inadequate attention all the seven if any of these receives inadequate attention the other may fall away bringing the whole educational efforts to little or no value so we have to be very very careful about this this is a very good picture it will attract your attention also dekhiye this he is a laborer boy he doesn't have that much of resources but whatever resources are available with him he has made the throne and he is sitting on it and see the uh, level of confidence he has so mindset is what separates the best from the rest so mindset is very very important for us we should not make perception at an instant perception is very important but shape is carefully this is uh, this is what i want to say and you can do anything there are certain stories mountain man manji he could make a way through the mountain the waterman rajender singh and if you can dream it then you can definitely achieve it but you have to believe in yourself and i tell you every student every student is a bright student in your class you have to 
work like a sculpture and you have to remove the unwanted stone then the beautiful idol will come out of it that we have to realize and we have to do it 24th january that is uh, yesterday it was the uh, death anniversary of homi jangir baba so i thought that i should take one quotation and i like this quotation personally insaan sirf usi cheez mein sarvshreshth kar sakta hai jise vah puri shiddat se chahta hai so that is very very important and we the teachers are agent of change and career anchors this we have to understand very well and the teachers have to know their students what are the learners who are the learners what do learners need to be able to do why is the subject necessary for this learner how can the learner best learn the subject we have to reply to these four questions we have to identify these four questions and only then we should prepare our course curriculum and course content if we will do like that definitely the students will be developed holistically and they can contribute significantly for the development who are the learners what do the learners need to be able to do why is the subject necessary and how can the learner best learn the subject so for that there is a need to reorient education एजुकेशन कैसी होनी चाहिए सोशली लोकली नीड बेस्ड सोशली रिलेवेंट नेशनली इंपॉर्टेंट एंड ग्लोबली सिग्निफिकेंट फ्रेंड्स ए कॉलेज बिल्डिंग इज नॉट जस्ट ए कलेक्शन ऑफ ब्रिक्स एंड मोर्टर इट्स ए डायनेमिक लर्निंग एनवायरमेंट एंड फॉर दैट वी नीड कैपेबल कमिटेड कॉम्पिटेंट डिसिप्लिन अपडेटेड एंड डेडिकेटेड टीचर्स एंड साइमल्टेनियसली द स्टूडेंट्स हु हैव डिजायर टू लर्न एंड विल टू एक्वायर स्किल अब आप कहेंगे कि देर आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशन इंडिया इज ए लार्ज कंट्री लॉट मेनी डाइवर्सिटीज एंड दिस एंड दैट यस आई डू एग्री इंडिया हैज ओवर 51,000 हायर एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशंस दिस अलोंग विद द लार्ज स्टूडेंट पॉपुलेशन कंस्टेंट पीपल टीचर रेशो डाइवर्स डेमोग्राफिक्स एंड डिस्टिंक्ट रूरल अर्बन डिवाइड ओवर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स लर्निंग रिसोर्सिस डिजिटल डिवाइड इन टर्म्स ऑफ मिनिमल एक्सेस टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसिस रिलायबल इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी और स्टेबल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक this the supply in rural areas make the indian higher education landscape unique and complex yeah everybody agrees the pandemic related challenges of obviously corona have added additional layers of complexity given the diversity in our institution and challenges faced by them indian hcis cannot rely on a one size fit all strategy yes different approaches will need to be applied while planning the practices to achieve the learning outcomes besides focusing only on learning outcome based curriculum indian institutions need to go one step beyond online classrooms to build strong institutional capacity to maximize outreach so this is the end note quality assurance kyu chahiye quality assurance is like adding brakes to cars the purpose of brakes is not to stop you it is to enable you to go fast brakes help avoid accidents caused by mechanical failures in other cars road drivers and road hazards quality assurance must be internally driven and become a need rather than an obligation whatever quality assurance system is adopted it has to be shared by majority of members of the institute and all stakeholders quality assurance is a destination but not an end point and we all are attending this two days national conference our ultimate purpose how wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world yeah very true raising the bar for institutions lacking in quality is the need of the hour it is more important to move in the right direction at the right time rather than just at the right speed and in our institution the environment should be like where the knowledge students surely have pleasure to receive the mentors that the teachers are capable enough to make them believe the goals students would find easy to achieve the vision must be followed by the venture it is not enough to stare up the steps it is not enough to stare up the step we must step up the stairs plan your work and work your plan it is the teacher that makes the difference not the classroom the influence of teachers extends beyond the classroom well into the future it is they who shape and enrich the minds of the young who touch their hearts and souls coming together is beginning staying together is progress and working together is 
सक्सेस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आपको ये करना चाहिए जो भी लोग इसमें आज जुड़े हुए हैं जीतूंगा मैं ये खुद से वादा करो जितना सोचते हो कोशिश उससे ज्यादा करो तकदीर भी रूठे पर हिम्मत ना टूटे मजबूत इतना अपना इरादा करो क्योंकि स्वर्गीय अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी कहते थे छोटे मन से कोई बड़ा नहीं होता टूटे मन से कोई खड़ा नहीं होता तो हमें ये चीजें नहीं करनी है और टीचर्स के लिए ये मैंने लाइन लिखी है ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इन द क्लाइमेट एंड कॉन्टेक्सट ऑफ कॉमर्सलाइजेशन कमलाइजेशन एंड सेंट्रलाइजेशन ए कोच ए टीचर और काउंसलर हु क्रिएट कंजर्व एंड कैटर नॉलेज हैज टू कोलेबरेट कोऑर्डिनेट एंड कॉपरेट एंड converts a student chela from carbon to crystal very important and it calls for chiseling under coercion and conscientious coaching completely and compulsorily crushing and curbing craving rote learning ki jo hum baat kar rahe the isko hame curb karna padega craving for carving is crucial critical and compelling to create caliber and characteristics like communication collaboration creativity and critical thinking फॉर कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव डेवलपमेंट अमृत काल चल रहा है जैसा माननीय प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी कहते रहते हैं तो इन दिस वी हैव टू टेक बड़े संकल्प लो आप दास्ता से निकलो जो प्री कंसीव बायस है हमारे अंदर उसको निकालना पड़ेगा वी शुड हैव प्राउड ऑन आवर हेरिटेज विरासत पर गर्व होना चाहिए सर्वश्रेष्ठ बनने के लिए एकता और सामंजस्यता होनी चाहिए हर इंस्टीट्यूशन में होनी चाहिए कर्तव्य बोध बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड बिलीव लीडरशिप नेतृत्व पर भरोसा आई हैव बीन इंप्रेस्ड विद अर्जेंसी ऑफ डूइंग नोइंग इज नॉट एनफ वी मस्ट अप्लाई बीइंग विलिंग इज नॉट एनफ वी मस्ट डू अब आप हमारे पास दो चॉइस हैं जैसे मैंने कहा था लास्ट स्लाइड कि आइदर यू फाइंड शेल्टर्स और यू मेक विंड मिल्स एल्बर्ट आइंस्टीन बहुत बड़े फिजिसिस्ट हुए हैं वंस सेड दैट ए शिप इज ऑलवेज सेफ एट शोर but that is not what it is built for and i think that really resonates with us all in a way it is to show that though we may always be safe when docked up and comfortable it is not our purpose we have to change with the time we have to update ourselves this is very important and we have to adopt this habit that we have to learn unlearn and relearn and to for all my teachers a teacher is a top theory artist who shapes cultivates grows illuminates minds he is not a bonsai expert who stunts his own and his students growth so stretch the boundaries my friends come out and decide that we will make all efforts to the maximum extent so that the quality can sustain and enhance in our respective institution so finally awake arise keep renewing to upgrade performance sharpen the saw or get lost so this is what i wanted to share with you and lastly i would request all the participants that please read this novel who moved my cheese by spencer johnson and the seven habits of highly effective people beautiful novel and give a message to the reader and how we need to change in the light of nep 2020 if we will not change with the time then we will become obsolete and the nep 2020 is going to throw a big challenge before the teaching community and the institution so please read these two novels this is the last slide and uh, once again i thank the principal morigam college the coordinator and the joint coordinators with a special mention of uh, dr sharda sri choudhary who could uh, rope me in and share some of my views on the topic with you all thank you thank you once again thank you so much sir thank you so much krishan kant sir thank you it was a uh, overwhelming listening to you sir you have rightly said that uh, quality is an attitude and it does not happen by accident as uh, the leader as the principal of uh, 
an institution, an academic institution, which in itself is a model of excellence, your attitude uh, and your vision is very palpably evident from the presentation that you have given. Thank you so much, sir. We are indeed uh, very grateful to you for having joined us and having accepted this invitation. Once again, thank you so much, sir. Uh, a seminar like this needs a resourceful lecture like yours. Uh, may I now request the participants uh, who have joined here uh, to kindly interact with Sir. And uh, the session is now open for discussions. Uh, sir is ready to take questions. Yes. Participants, please. Sir Namaskar. Namaskar. Sir Namaskar. Excellent presentation, sir. Thank you. We have learned a lot in the field of education, and uh, we are very lucky that we have uh, uh, got so many resources from you, sir. It was most deserved for us, sir. Thank you. May God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Budhin Saikia, for your uh, response. Uh, sir, I think we should uh, move ahead with the technical session. Maybe we can take the questions later on, if it is all right with you. With your permission, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. Please. Yeah, I had a question, but then I think I would postpone it uh, to sometime later. Um, so uh, because uh, we are running short of time, and there is a time constraint, as always, uh, may I now uh, move forward uh, with the technical session? So uh, I, I request Dr. Uh, Dhananjay Kushre, sir, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, and the chairperson of this session to take over. But uh, before that, I would uh, like to read out the names of all the participants who are presenting papers in this session so that they can prepare accordingly. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Nabanita Sharma as the first paper presenter, followed by Priya Mundra, Anupam Borguhain, Dr. Arpita De, Dr. Gola Panging, and Rubjuti Duori, which is a joint paper, uh, Himani Medhi and her co-presenters, followed by Dr. Nivedita Mohanto, Pratush Gogoi, Ritu Sarkar, Dr. Saptarshi Paul, Dr. Satyabrata Borua, Dr. Manisha Das, and Agnivina Brahma, Charushmita Mahanta, Kanchana Das, Pramod Kumar Roy, Jumi Kolita, and Nidarshan Nandan Kaushik with her with his uh, co-presenter Megha Chaudhary. So we have uh, 17 papers in all, and uh, I think we shall be giving all presenters seven minutes time for presentation. So now may I request Dr. Dhananjay Kushre, sir, the chairperson of this session, to kindly take over. It's over to you, sir. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, it's me, Himani Medi. Yes, Himani. Uh, ma'am, please schedule my presentation at the last uh, because of my some sickness. I am not able to present. Okay, at the that, that's all. Right. That's all. Right. That's all. Right. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. May I request the first presenter, Dr. Nabanita Sharma, to kindly present her paper. <laughs> ma'am, am I audible? Yes, 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 ma'am, you're audible. Ma'am, you're audible. OK.
Good morning and namaskar to all of you present here. I am Nabanta Sharma, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, Kumar Bhaskar Verma Sanskrit and Ancient Studies University. And the title of my paper is The Forward Looking Vision for Quality Higher Education as Reflected in National Education Policy 2020 and Analysis. National Education Policy, in short, which is known as NEP 2020, aims to transform education system in India. NEP 2020 has emerged out of the need to meet the demands of the 21st century. NEP 2020 has tried to ensure the quality and excellence in higher education. But I understand it's all right, sir. Yes. Elsa, thank Am you I so audible, much. I'll talk to you sir, later. I like it was really an overwhelming uh, lecture. Yes, sir. An eye-opening, overwhelming, and a much needed lecture at this time. Thank, thank you so much, sir. I can never thank you enough. Thank you enough. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Am I audible, ma'am? Hello, ma'am. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, am I? My voice is audible. Ma'am, your voice is audible. You are visible, and the slides are equally visible. Ma'am, please go ahead. Okay, 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 okay. NEP 2020 has tried to ensure the quality and excellence in higher education as it decides a nation's economy, social status, technology, acceptance, and healthy human behavior. This policy especially emphasizes at quality of higher educational institutions and establishing India as a global hub of education. And accordingly, it has highlighted certain uh, issues uh, in this regard, uh, which are currently prevalent in higher education sectors, like a severely fragmented higher educational ecosystem, less emphasis on the development of cognitive skills and learning outcome, a rigid separation of disciplines with uh, early specialization and streaming of students into narrow areas of study, limited access, particularly in socioeconomically disadvantaged areas, limited teachers and institutional autonomy, etc. So thus, in order to eliminate these various issues uh, uh, in higher education, NEP 2020's prime focus is on providing flexible curriculum through a multidisciplinary approach, creating multiple exit points in what would be a four-year uh, undergraduate program, catalyzing research, improving faculty support, and increasing internationalization of higher education, and uh, for ensuring quality and excellence in higher educational institution, uh, NEP 2020 has put forward its uh, certain concern, uh, concerns uh, towards higher education. And in this table, I have mentioned uh, NEP 2020's concerns towards a higher education. But in my paper, uh, this paper has been uh, delimited to two major concerns out of these various concerns, that is holistic and multidisciplinary education and internationalization of higher education. And this paper is based on qualitative research approach, and it attempts to discuss on the recommendations putting forward it by NEP 2020 towards holistic and multidisciplinary education and internationalization of higher education, and to show up the possible challenges which may stand as obstacles on the way to implement the recommendations of NEP 2020. So here I'd like to mention the various recommendations uh, uh, given by NEP 2020 in relation to holistic and multidisciplinary education. So it has uh, uh, provided various recommendations separately for undergraduate program and uh, for master's program. So first of all, I'd like to mention the recommendations of NEP 2020 regarding undergraduate level. 
So the major emphasis uh, uh, in these various uh, recommendations regarding uh, undergraduate level, the first one is reflection on long Indian tradition of holistic and comprehensive education. This policy has highlighted that the concept of holistic development is not at all a modern concept, rather the practice of this kind of education was there in ancient Indian higher educational institutions like Takshashila and Nalanda. It has also especially mentioned about Banavata's Kadambari, where education is defined as knowledge of 64 colors or arts. This definition indicates that uh, education should be very much holistic, comprehensive, and multidisciplinary in nature. And as such, NEP 2020 has emphasized on the need of reimagining and reintroducing it according to the need of the 21st century. Then the next emphasis that is uh, uh, found in the recommendations of NEP 2020, that is integration of uh, different uh, disciplines, uh, along with uh, 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 science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. And it believes that this integration of various disciplines will bring positive learning outcome, outcome like creativity and innovation, critical thinking, higher order thinking, etc. In this regard, it is remarkable to mention that uh, IITs are suggested to incorporate with more arts and humanities. Then another uh, important focus for ensuring uh, quality and excellence in higher educational institution that is redesigning of curriculum. And for the, this, uh, the NEP has traced on combination of various disciplines and multiple entry and exit. It believes that imparting of high quality multidisciplinary education is possible through large multidisciplinary and holistic universities. And in this regard, it has suggested to establish around uh, 20 departments in uh, every higher educational institutions. And also it has suggested to strengthen if these uh, departments are already existed. There is special mention of projects, also of opportunities for internship with local industry, business, artists, craft par uh, persons, etc. In order to ensure quality and excellence, it has uh, provided certain provision of certification, especially for undergraduate level. So uh, the first provision that uh, students will be awarded a certificate if uh, he or she can complete one year in a discipline. If the student can complete two year in a discipline, uh, will be awarded a diploma. If uh, can complete, uh, student can complete three year in a discipline, uh, will be awarded a bachelor's degree. And if the student can complete four year in a discipline, with a rigorous research project with their areas of study as specified uh, by uh, higher educational institutions, then the students will be awarded a bachelor's degree with research. So uh, like undergraduate level, NEP 2020 has also recommended certain suggestions uh, for a master's program. So here I would like to mention certain specific uh, recommendations uh, uh, of NEP 2020 towards uh, master's program. So the first one is redesigning of course structure and duration. And accordingly, we find uh, three provisions uh, regarding course structure and duration. According to the first provision, if the student can complete a three-year bachelor's degree, he or she has to study a two-year master's program where the student has to carry on research in the second year of the program. Provision second, if the student can complete a four year uh, bachelor's degree, he or she has to study only one year master's program. And provision three, that uh, there can also be the provision for five year bachelor's or master's program. Then again, especially in the master's program for ensuring a quality, NEP has uh, stressed on research. So it has mentioned that for undertaking PhD, students require 
a master's degree or a four-year bachelor's degree with research. And it has suggested for a discontinuation of MPhil degree. The National Research Foundation is entrusted to look after all the research-related activities in all higher educational uh, institutions. And it has again suggested that in order to facilitate uh, research and innovation at higher education level, certain startup incubation centers should be uh, established in every higher educational institutions. So here it is uh, uh, very noteworthy to be mentioned that uh, due to the circumstances of emergence of COVID-19 pandemic situation, NEP has specially uh, encouraged for research in certain areas like infectious diseases, epidemiology, virology, uh, vaccinology, etc. Then uh, I'd like to mention uh, the recommendations uh, that are uh, man, uh, that are you know, provided by. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, can I intervene? Ma'am, yes. can I intervene? Ma'am, you can straight away yes. come to the findings and the conclusion, ma'am, because okay. of time constraint. Okay, okay. So here, uh, due to time constraint, I am skipping uh, my slides. So in this uh, slide, actually, in these two slides, uh, I have mentioned uh, whatever uh, recommendations uh, are there in NEP 2020 towards uh, internationalization of a higher education. So what I have uh, realized that uh, uh, NEP 2020 has uh, provided very valuable uh, recommendations uh, uh, for ensuring quality in higher educational institutions. But uh, in order to actualize all those recommendations, certain possible challenges may arise. So I'd like to mention uh, these challenges. So I have specified certain uh, possible challenges regarding holistic and multidisciplinary education, like insufficient infrastructure facilities and educational setup in existing higher educational institutions, lack of sufficient resources, because establishment of various departments will automatically demand for proficient faculties. The execution of the provision of multiple entry and exit will initially encounter challenges as it will require a standard regulation on the part of its higher educational institution. Otherwise, it may create a confused situation. Likewise, I have mentioned certain uh, possible challenges regarding uh, internationalization of higher education, like for collaborative research project, ensuring availability of resource is a challenge in case of higher educational institutions. Few higher educational institutions in India are only well equipped with sufficiency of resources for collaborative research work in international platform, Do NEP has mentioned signing beneficial MOU with foreign countries, but most of the higher educational institutions are seen to be practicing only decorative MOU. Lack of sufficient fund for a teacher's exchange program, that is another challenge I have found. Then less sensitization of the benefits or opportunities in international platforms to attract students, that may be another possible challenge. And the students will, will be attracted to high quality higher education only, but unfortunately in the world university rankings, no higher educational institution is able to hold its place in top 200 position as on uh, 2018. So these are uh, uh, certain possible challenges which may come, but uh, in the conclusion, what I want to say that uh, planning can be a fruitful with its right execution. As a new educational plan of the 21st century, NEP 2020 has also implementation challenges, what I do believe. And accordingly, uh, it has uh, to be, you know, uh, it has to identify its immediate challenges and to find out its solution uh, because implementation requires a radical change into the existing system of education. And here I have mentioned certain suggestions, I don't know whether a time will permit me or not. And if you allow, I can uh, mention, or otherwise I can uh, conclude my uh, presentation, uh, which you know, my words like uh, proper implementation of the recommendations of NEP 2020 will help 
to realize its forward-looking vision for quality higher education in India. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Nabanida, madam. Uh, as decided, we can have the uh, interaction session later after the presentations together. Together. Uh, thank okay. you so much for your presentation. It was a very valuable paper. Valuable paper. Okay. On Due to time forward, on only a, yes, yes, ma'am. I yeah. not... on forward-looking vision for quality in higher education. May I now request yes. the next presenter, Priya Mundra, to kindly present her paper. Priya's paper would be followed by uh, Anupam Borguhai, the next presenter. Uh, so I request him to be uh, ready with the, his presentation. So now I request Priya Mundra to present the paper. Hello. Please, please unmute yourself, Priya. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Priya, you're audible and visible. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Priya Mundra, and today my topic is Higher Education NAP 2020 Implementation Issues and Challenges. As we all know, education is the foundation stone of the nation. It plays a powerful role in the growth and development of the country and its citizens as stated in the goal uh, of uh, as did hello hello oh, okay. goal uh, uh, sustainable development goal uh, four of uh, agenda 2030 a sustainable development a global education plan intends to offer inclusive and equitable quality education and encourage lifelong learning opportunities for everyone by 2030 the uh, NEP 2020 today is um, is the first uh, education policy of 21st century. Uh, it has been come after 34 years, uh, which are uh, followed by the uh, last uh, education policy of 1986. The main objectives of my paper is to study the highlights of higher education in national education policy 2020 and to analyze the issues and challenges in the implementation of national education policy 2020 and to distinguish between the strengths and weaknesses in the higher education and to provide some suggestion to, um, for effective implementation of the policy the main uh, some of the main findings are um, gross enrollment ratio in the higher education including vocational education to be raised from 26.3% in 2018 to 50% by 2035. Uh, this is one of the main aim uh, in the higher education uh, as given by uh, National Policy Education 2020. Higher education, education mon uh, monitoring and controlling institution like UGC, AICTE, MCI, DCI, INC, etc will be merged with the Higher Education Commission of India as a single regulatory of higher education institutions. The multidisciplinary university will be of two types, such as research intensive universities and teaching intensive universities. Higher education institution which will deliver the higher quality will get more incentives from the government. Choice-based credit system is revised by an innovative and flexible con competency-based credit system. The new education policy provides multiple entry and exit points with certificates at every stage and envisages multidisciplinary education with flexible curriculum and creative combination of the subjects. Multidisciplinary education and research universities is to be established to provide the best multidisciplinary education of uh, global standards in the country at par with IITs and IIMs. As teacher, all standalone teacher education institutions should convert themselves as multidisciplinary higher education institution by 2030 to offer only four years integrated B.A. program. Undergraduate education can be of three or four years with multiple exit options in appropriate certificates of different stages. Higher education institution, these are some of the uh, findings uh, the uh, highlights of NEP 2020 in the higher education areas. Now, some of the issues which comes in implementing this uh, national education policy 2020 are lack of infrastructure and funding. 
The National Education Policy 2020 aims at making our home country a global choice of education by providing high quality, different uh, variety and dynamic education hub to all the people in the abroad. The policy focus on raising expenditure in the education sector to reach 6% of GDP at earliest, as it was uh, also recommended by Kothari Commission, uh, which was not implemented till today. And the last year, in a um, in 2020-21 session, the uh, budget was 3.2 percent only, which is actually recommended as 6 percent. So it is quite a concern. The e, e infrastructure in remote places, e infrastructure and e resources will be necessary as a learning uh, is the way forward to satisfy the goals of NAP 2020. Addresses significant issues in classroom instruction. A comprehensive infrastructure will be required, which will comprise multimedia-based audio-visual technology expertise driven online resources and digital classroom. This will be significant prob problem in rural areas in the coming areas, particularly in government-run institution. The new evolution method, the traditional assessment risk system has to be up updated. There is a current, currently no consensus to, on how to do so. The existing method is based on a metaphorical assessment that has to be designed and will be will need a system uh, that is extremely subjective, requiring a fair way to of review. Establishment of quality colleges in universities, multilingualism debate, home language succeeds in the uh, place where the ecosystem extends all the way through the higher education institute education and inter employment without such an ecosystem in the place this may be not good enough corruption in education corruption in indian education system has been ero erotic the quality of education it is uh, one of the major contributors to domestic black money payment to the management at dark rooms and seeking admissions in increasing curriculum issues there are many different systems and uh, confused that uh, the students who wish to achieve the same objectives such as engineering medical and business administration at the high education level there is no uniformity in syllabus taught for the same program syllabus revision is done quite often without considering the contemporary requirement of the industries there is lack of delivery in a, in a subject one can take in college flexibility across over streams is also lacking so these are some of the issues and challenges some of the strengths uh, of the NEP 2020 NEP 2020 is a futuristic and expected to fulfill the gap between the current status of national innovation and desired state of national innovation. The policy contains a comprehensive proposal on all aspects of education for all levels of people. Systematic education for children is proposed for the third year of their from the third year of their age. The entire proposal is based on the concept of education for equality. Emphasis is on manpower development, entrepreneurability, and employability. All the types of higher education institution will be multidisciplinary date and uh, autonomous accreditation and autonomous degree granting institution at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Supports to fulfill the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by 2030 addressed uh, uh, systematic education requirement for a citizen for lifelong learning the proposal is innovative and supportive to break the silos of existing system priya uh, priya could you kindly come to the conclusion could you sum it up priya okay okay ma'am okay yes okay um so um there are some recommendations which I would like to conclude. Um, India has to be embrace computer and high speed internet internet technology. The system so reward the, those who deserve highest academic honor. The uh, grammar should not be rewarded. Our testing and marking system need to be built to recognize and contribution creativity, problem solving in, and innovation. Ranks should be awarded accordingly. 
education without character is abortion and will create a division in the society a country that learn lowers the quality of education allows score a competition in exams will collapse so the burden uh, of the theory paper should be reduced and practical components should be given more importance and are effective and meaningful tra uh, transaction of the curriculum so i would like to conclude by saying that the new education policy 2020 ha that has been proposed in the year 2020 is yet to be implemented uh, efficiently in many of the areas of the country it is an ambitious move to revive the indian education system with a modern approach thank you well, thank you so much priya it was very uh, interesting uh, the manner of presentation as well and you have included very important issues you have talked of the digital divide that how rural india would not be you know on a equal footing to face uh, the changes uh, we also have a hand raised but then uh, i would request dr kalyandas uh, sir could you kindly uh, postpone your question to some time uh, later we will have the interaction session at the end uh, so uh, thank you so much priya uh, for the presentation uh, may i call up the next presenter uh, anupam borgohai so if you are present i would request you to present your paper I, c I cannot see his name in the participant list. Okay, he might join us later. Uh, the next presenter is Dr. Arpita De, Dr. Gola Panging, Rubjuti Duori. If they are not present, uh, I would like to call out Dr. Nivedita Mohanta and Dr. Probenson Terong. They are presenting a joint paper. Sir Probenson Terong, are you there? Please unmute and speak. Yes, madam. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, sir. I, I request you to present your paper, sir. And you would be uh, given seven minutes for that. Seven minutes of presentation, sir, and discussion at the end. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you for the time. And um, our paper is about institutional leadership and uh, their social practices. And this is a joint paper. Uh, by Dr. Nivedita Mohanta, Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, and myself, Provenson Terran, Department of Economics, Assistant Professor. So I will read out institutional leadership and social responsibility practices of a higher education institution, uh, a comparative study of colleges in Jorhat district. Let me present my share my screen for the presentation hello madam yes sir is it visible yes sir. your screen is visible sir okay madam institutional leadership and their social responsibility practices of higher education institute in assam and uh, we select our study area in jorhat district uh, in the introduction uh, social responsibility is a practices basically uh, undertaken by the stakeholders and the leadership of the institute for the benefit of the society and this is social responsibility practices is not only done by the educational institute but uh, it is also common in the corporate sector which is also called as uh, corporate social responsibility and uh, nowadays this practice is very uh, common or and uh, gaining importance among colleges and uh, with this reason we want to find out what are the practices for the a society that a college or university is taking up and by selecting few of the colleges in Jorhat district. Our objective of the study is uh, to highlight the institutional leadership and their social practices and to critically examine uh, what are the unique practices done by a particular college with respect to another and to 
at the end to suggest some policy regard to the study area. And we use the data, uh, uh, yearly annual report, and then the SSR report of NAC and AQAR reports of different colleges for the last three years. And we accordingly group all of our uh, findings in a manner to compare uh, among, among different colleges. So I want to share the findings, but before the before sharing the findings, uh, we would like to give a brief overview and major highlights of uh, colleges, colleges uh, in our hard district. So uh, we have selected ten district, uh, sorry, ten colleges, and uh, and we list it according to the alphabetical order. So. Uh, Bahona College established in 1966. Then uh, this these are the number of uh, faculty. Number of students is approximately 890 and so. And the NAC cycle and the grade they have obtained in the last grade out A plus. Yes, uh, A plus. And then their CGPA is 3.6. And it was done in last year, 2022. And they, the course they have provided in their institute. Then we have CKB Commerce College, established in 1965. It is a provincialized college and uh, a stream offers commerce, 27 faculty approx, and then student 1,000 approx. And they have done second cycle of NAC accreditation, uh, obtained B double plus, and CGPA is 2.54 in 2016. And we have CKB uh, College, Tioch, uh, their Establishment is 1959, provincialized college, and then the number of faculty is 34. Number of students is 1,500 approximate. They have done second cycle, obtained B, and their CGP is 2.59, and done in 2015. And accordingly, we have a DCB Girls College in our study, established in 1955, provincialized, art science course provide, 64 number of faculties and approx 1800 students and they have done third cycle accreditation obtained b b plus and 2.59 is their cgpa and we have jb college established in 1930 this is the oldest college and provincialized provides art science commerce uh, about about 90 uh, faculty then almost 2,500 number of students and done third cycle NAP accreditation, obtained A in 2018, and the CGP is 3.11. And accordingly, we have a list of colleges. Uh, we have selected 10 colleges. And for the last colleges, and then Soikia, we could not find the number of uh, faculty and the approximate number of students. but we found that they have also completed second cycle of NAP accreditation, obtained B, and their CGP is 2.65 in 2015. And this is our major highlights about the college under study. And we want to present what are our findings uh, by carrying out this study. So institutional responsibility practices is done by the college in different uh, way. A, a college have different bodies, cells, societies, and accordingly, different activities is carried out to the benefits of the society. And we group it, uh, all the colleges matter. First, of activities, then according to their and group the activities which are meant for social responsibility are number one, community, number two, work related to social extra development, and four policies for Number five, social of institutions. And this 
and gives a certain number of hours. And of our study, we have found that this college uh, is doing little bit in case of awareness program on order to help in this region. And other unique uh, experience is they have done is education campaign on and all road cleanliness and health living. This is one of the unique pieces they have done in extension organized in the neighborhood communities in the region. And number two, workshop seminar talk awareness program related to women. And here also, women against violence against women. Uh, this is one of the unique in the region they have uh, done. And number three, awareness program on removing superstitious superstition and prejudice. This is also another uh, unique among other works done in the uh, in in this the region of this college college and popular talk on science ecology and society this is also another uh, unique activities they have done in the region by this college and number 4 policy adopted for environmental consciousness and sustainability here number 1 in for the case of energy converts conservation measure sensor based efficient uh, appliance this is another uh, good practice done by the bahona college and charging port for e vehicles this is basically uh, for nearby community uh, they open a charging port and then the vehicles especially the e rexa they they can go and uh, charge. charge their vehicles uh, this so is Robinson, uh, so could i ask you to kindly uh, you know uh, wrap up your findings uh, briefly uh, because okay, of, uh, okay. we're running okay. short of time so we have the presentation so uh, uh, out of this uh, five banner we uh, we have found that there are different activities which are common in among the college but some are unique among the college so i will only highlight those unique activities practices by the college so uh, in case of social specific uh, social commitment of the institution bahona college practice special scholarship for meritorious student uh, but economically poor and they have completed minor major research project focusing on community and rural development and when we go to another uh, college that is uh, ckb commerce college uh, here we find mega free medical camp free medicine distribution is actually one of the common practices they have done and in number four banner uh, they promote uh, geriatric love and care via uh, pranam this is one of the unique practices in the region practiced by this college and in specific commitment special uh, of the institution financial help to girls student on medical ground this is one of the unique practices done by the college and then they also publish books related to women and ckb commerce college Tiok, they have some unique practices again uh, in in the first banner they have come they they come up with off-campus environmental awareness and plantation program. Number two, they open certificate course related uh, for the empowerment of women. And in number four, in number four policy adopted for environmental consciousness and sustainability, they have adopt a unique activity that is wildlife protection program, which is not done by other college. And they construct a tiger shed and 20 artificial bird nests near in, in their nearby campus. And when we go on uh, for a specific social commitment of this institution by CKB Commerce School, uh, CKB Tiok, they have done, uh, they take a time of appreciation to the unsung social leaders. That means uh, in the nearby re uh, area, they appreciate the uh, eminent educationists and leaders. And they open group insurance for the students. These are some of the unique practices. And when we go to DCB Girls College, we found that 
they use computerized voting machine as a unique practice uh, for the society benefit. Student election. Yes. And when we come to JB College, it uh, it for the uh, they organize program related to women and they uh, they they do strict play for gender sensitization. This is one of the unique practices we see uh, on, in this region. And number six, Jorhat College. In this college, we see some of the activities which are uh, similar with uh, the other practices, but we see some uh, unique practices like reservation for the girls, uh, the girls student in the election and they open martial art training for the girls student and these are some of the unique practices of the college and accordingly we have uh, some uh, college uh, jorhat kendra mahavidlai but uh, we have not found some of the data uh, which is not uh, they are not available in their website so we conclude that these are some of the unique findings and the rest of the work they have done by the colleges are more or less common. So we find out some of the unique practices of colleges in Jorhat, uh, in, in Jorhat region. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Indeed, uh, in, within Assam, Bahona College is performing very well. We are aware of that, which is in Jorhat district. Uh, thank you, sir, for your enlightening presentation. We would, as already uh, mentioned, we would have the interaction session later. Uh, may I now request the next presenter? Uh, this is a joint paper, Pratush Gogoi and uh, Dr. Homi Saliha, to kindly present the paper. Pratush, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, Pratush. Very clearly, you are audible. Uh, may I request you to present your paper, Pratush? Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, Pratush, please go ahead. Uh, very good afternoon uh, to uh, the chairperson, respected uh, Professor Dhananjay sir, uh, resource person, respected Dr. Uh, Krishan Kant Gupta sir, uh, respected Dr. Saradashri ma'am, along with all the faculties, uh, dignitaries and the participants uh, gathered here today. At the outset, uh, we would like to uh, thank the organizer for giving us the opportunity to present our paper through virtual mode. Now, this is a joint paper. And we, Sri Pratyush Gogoi, student, and respected Dr. Okhomi Soliha, ma'am, from the Department of Education, the Brigger University, are going to present a joint seminar paper on disruption of learning at higher education during COVID-19 and a role of ICT in bridging the gap, uh, a review of challenges and solutions with special reference to India. Now. Uh, what is learning? Uh, we all know that learning is a lifelong endeavor. It's a unique process by, uh, whereby individuals acquire, store, and accept information. And it, is, it goes on a continuum. It is a growth that takes place uh, with interaction, uh, leading to better adjustment in various spheres of life. In facilitating learning, educational institutions play a very important role as it provides a space to inculcate knowledge and experience on various fields. But a sudden threat in the form of pandemic brought a disruption in it. It was just like, as Charles Dickens uh, put it in his A Tale of Two Cities, I quote, uh, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the spring of home, it was the winter of despair. Our condition was just like that. We were in an uncertain condition and that disruption brought a gap in learning. We were being cut off from the social interaction as lockdown was announced uh, in the real and the effect of it is different for different countries, especially for the third world countries. The effect of it had on different spheres of life was different and be India being the, a third world country has a severe impact. Uh, with these ideas, we uh, have the objectives 
to review and analyze the challenges in learning created by COVID-19 with a special emphasis on Indi uh, higher Indian higher education sector. And also, we would like to highlight the role of ICT in combating those challenges and bridging the learning gap. Now, what is disruption of learning at higher education? Disruption uh, is commonly attributed as a disturbance or problem which interrupt an event, activity, or a process. It is also a kind of a radical change to an existing industry or market due to technological innovation. But in this case, it means the interruption of learning at higher education due to COVID-19 and the problems that it has already created or will create in future the con in the concerned educational level, that is higher education. As a reaction to the pandemic, colleges and universities were uh, closed down. Uh, closed down. We all were aware of that. And as a result, a regression in learning, making cascading effects on education sector of India has occurred. It is uh, estimated that over 32 crores of Indian students at higher education have been affected by the pandemic. But somehow, ICT rescued the great damage, though the matter of its effectiveness is a great question. Now, what findings we got uh, about this? First, the aspects of disruption of learning at higher education. There are various aspects that had, uh, of learning that are disrupted due to uh, COVID. First, there is admission. Uh, the entrance exams could not be uh, held. Then, in regard to curriculum uh, transaction, the physical uh, classes were being stopped due uh, to, you know, stop the rapid uh, spread of the disease. And it led to the, uh, you know, avoid in experiential learning. So curriculum trans uh, transaction plays a very important role in any teaching learning process. And it, as it is prepared with the expected goal contents to develop those aim goals, methods and techniques to realize the goals. As due to COVID, face-to-face -face teaching was vehemently discontinued. It created a problem in transaction and learning of the higher uh, education. Now, regarding the experiential learning, learning to be fruitful needs to be experience-based and it is more needed in the higher education as it is. it aims to build up as a critical uh, knowledge builder, aware of the social realities. Different streams and uh, specialized fields have different methods. As during COVID, everyone was closed uh, within the four walls, giving the students that real experience of learning at higher education was almost a dream. Then the access to learning. A country like India, where more than half of the people were underprivileged, accessing learning during the COVID uh, could be a major issue. Those students at higher uh, education level are much matured, but that doesn't provide a proper justification for the proper learning. Lack of connectivity, a device for virtual meeting, pause as barrier in learning at higher education. Now, there is also issues related to pedagogy. The pedagogy is the method and strategies that helps to facilitate learning. Though online meetings are used uh, uh, as much during the pandemic to transfer learning, but it is limited only to lecture method or to PowerPoint presentation. How far it is affected, that is uh, remain a question. Now, uh, whenever we talk about learning, assessment is an integral process uh, as it helps to gog the development of a learner in learning. Various open book method online examinations have been adopted during the time. But did it really assess what it intended to assess the abilities at higher education? Or did it remain at knowledge level? Because the higher education aims at developing critical and creative thinking abilities, the reliability and validity of those tools seem to be a question. This question needs to be rediscovered again. Last but not the least, that the employment opportunities. Learning and placement are two sides of this uh, coin called education. Proper placement is one of the uh, indicators of successful completion of education. As a gap in learning occurred during the time, its impact in employment opportunity can only be assumed in the late future. Now, we have also got some findings related to the factors responsible 
uh, there is the digital phobia and the digital device as uh, India is a third world country and uh, most of the people are remain under below poverty line. Then is the typical notion of online learning hitherto. We have a, a stereotypical thought that uh, learning in online is not effective. Then the infrastructure as the economy of uh, our India is not that good. So we had a lack of infrastructural facilities at higher education too to run the uh, you know uh, digital teaching effectively. Then there is a lack in innovative upgradation, <laughs> unplanned e-learning and e economy of the country. These all were responsible in, you know, creating the distortion and disruption in learning at higher education. Now, what role did ICT play in reconstruction of learning during the pandemic? Various online platforms uh, such as uh, Google Meet, WebEx, Zoom uh, helped to continue the classes through virtual meeting. Government has taken initiative with digital learning platforms such as Egyan Kosh, Swayam, MOOCs, etc. Then, uh, use of social media for sharing information uh take for example whatsapp groups played a very important role during that time to uh share the materials and uh other things of uh, learning then uh after the first wave uh, uh the blended learning approach uh, took into place uh where you know whenever necessary uh you know classes were not stopped rather uh, it was switched to uh, the blending of both virtual and physical. Then online assessment tools such as Google Forms, Open Books, uh, and monitoring through uh, Skype of student learning, etc., uh, came into existence. Now, with this uh, Pratish, situation, uh, Pratish, could you kindly? Sum yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. ma'am. Sure. Now, uh. Learning, we know that learning is not something uh, that is only to gather, you know, information, but learning is also to lead life, as Sir has already said. It flows in a continuum, as Britta Ducker has stated. Therefore, education sector, you know, must be prepared so that the continuum goes, uh, goes on without any disruption and can bring a desired change in humans and they can uh, inculcate knowledge, skills, attitude values and morals necessary to create this world a better place for all and when learning becomes real to life and only then it can help us to fight with the such impending dangers in the near future last but not the least i would like to again uh, offer my gratitude uh, for bearing with us uh, we hope this presentation uh, has helped you to uh, uh, to add your knowledge uh, field of knowledge thank you ma'am uh, thank you, Pratush. Uh, that was a very good presentation from your part. Uh, we are happy to have uh, such good papers in the online session today. Uh, the next presenter is Ritu Sarkar uh, with Dr. Zacharya Turki. May I uh, request them to present their paper? Ritu, madam? Ma'am. Yeah. Yes, yes ma'am. Please uh, kindly go ahead, ma'am. I hope the slide is visible. Am I audible, ma'am? OK, thank you so much. A very good afternoon to all. I'm Ritu Sarkar, along with Dr. Zakaria Stirki. Uh, we are going to present our paper today on the topic status of technological practices and influence of non-cognitive variable on the attitude towards technological practices among secondary school pupil teachers of teacher education institution and investigation. Gone are the days where concept of education and teaching was considered simply passing on information using chalk and talk method. 
Now, with uh, the changing dynamics of the society, we all know education is also a dynamic process. So we need to change our way of teaching too, in order to ensure that the teacher as well as the students take part actively in the whole teaching learning process. There comes uh, the new technologies which actually help us to involve the students in the whole teaching learning process actively. The study actually tried to assess the status of use of various technological practices that uh, an institute uses, especially the teacher education institution. An influence of location, gender, and stream, these are all non-cognitive variables on the attitude towards technological practices. A review of related literature, there are many commission starting with Kothari commission as mentioned by the resource person also today, that a nation is shaped and built inside the classroom and teacher acts as an architect in order to shape and build the nation. The National Policy on Education, 1984-86, POA 1992, even the new policy NEP 2020 has highlighted the there is a need of strengthening and expanding the existing digital and ongoing ICT based educational initiatives. We all know there are many uh, advancement which is going on in the field of technology, but how many of us really use it? You know, uh, I mean, keeping in view all those review and the situation, the objective of the study was formulated in order to find out technological practices in secondary teacher education institutions in Meghalaya to study the influence of non-cognitive variables, location, uh, urban, rural, gender, male, female, and stream science education, social sciences in the attitude of secondary school stage people teachers towards technological practices. Hypothesis was also formulated for objective number two. There is no significant influence of non-cognitive variables in terms of uh, location, gender, stream in the attitude of secondary school stage pupil teachers towards technological practices. Now, the delimitation of the study was that it was considered only in Meghalaya. The study was conducted only in Meghalaya and it was delimited only to teacher education institute where BEd is there. Uh, the methodology which was used was descriptive come normative survey technique. Population was 565 uh, secondary school stage people teacher of four teacher education institutes of Meghalaya. Out of that, randomly 280 people teachers were selected. Questionnaire and attitude scale which was standardized by the researcher was used. Descriptive and inferential statistical technique were used in analyzing the data such as mean, standard deviation, standard error of difference, ANOVA was used. ANOVA was used with the help of SPSS. Now, uh, coming to analyze and interpretation, in order to analyze uh, objective number one, uh, the questionnaire were prepared and was distributed to 280 people teacher. And it was found out that uh, many of the institutes were having uh, many technology, they were using it, but there were lack of a computer teacher somewhere, there are lack of uh, other technologies which are actually there, in, but they are not using it. They are not aware of many uh, technologies such as Mentimeter, which actually makes the teaching learning process very helpful. And uh, similarly, smart board, uh, LCD panel boards are there in use. Uh, EduSet is no longer in use in any of the institute. Uh, 70, uh, sorry, 55% of respondents claim that they use a uh, learning management system such as uh, Google Classroom, but they are not using ERP system. ERP system has been used and recently introduced in uh, Northeastern Hill University, but uh, the colleges are not using it. The majority of uh, respondents stated that they conduct uh, classes uh, using Google Classroom from Google Meet, um, Zoom, Webex, so on and so forth. E-resources are also available and 60 to 70% of respondents said that they do uh, assess the national digital library for their teaching learning process. 
coming to objective number two, uh, which was to study the influence of non-cognitive variables uh, along with the hypothesis. This is the table which shows uh, the uh, output of the uh, raw data. Coming to interpretation, the uh, F value for location and gender are shown in the table. I'm not going to read out the whole thing. Uh, basically, there was no interaction, we can say. And thus, we have actually rejected the null hypo uh, I mean, sorry, we have uh, not rejected the null hypothesis. We have accepted it. And we may say that uh, technological practices was found to be independent of any kind of interaction in the non cognitive variables. Now findings, coming to findings, it was found out that all teacher education institute practice various technological practices to enhance their teaching learning process. It was also found that non-cognitive variables such as location, gender, and stream has no influence uh, on the attitude of secondary stage pupil teachers towards technological practices. Uh, the F value for interaction among uh, location, gender, and discipline, or you can say stream, is 0.585, which is not significant at 0 0.05 level. Uh, the suggestion was that the institute may uh, use different learning management system apart from Google Classroom. Uh, they can use Moodle, which is uh, free of cost. Uh, various uh, platform like quizzes, discussion forum, and other form of assessment can be beneficial to people teacher as they are the one who is going out of their uh, after finishing the training they are the one who is going to teach the school students who are the future of our nation the institute may also incorporate erp system which will help them to manage day-to-day uh, -day activity biometric facility for people teacher can be established this is a, a non-human resource uh, or we can say the hardware of technology which can be established in uh, the institute in order to maintain the uh, attendance, which we can easily maintain through biometric. A separate ICT instructor can be uh, can be appointed uh, in the institute in order to increase the competency level of te people teachers so that they are confident enough to use technology when they are in school, maybe for practice teaching and so on and so forth. Uh, in conclusion, we can say with the rapid advancement of technology, many new application, ICT based application are uh, emerging. And as a teacher, we need to be updated and we need to know how to effectively use it, adapt them in order to help and strengthen the teaching learning process and make it uh, in such a way that it engage our students who are already a technologically savvy people. People, teachers, that is the BA Trainer, uh, trainees must accept any technological techniques and constantly improve themselves so as to teach their next generation. These are the references and thank you so much for your valuable time. Thank you, uh, Ritu Sarkar. It was interesting listening to you. Um, thank you. May I? Yeah, okay. Th thank you so much. Uh, may I call out the next presenter, Dr. Saptarshi Paul, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and IQSC Coordinator, Assam University. I think uh, Dr. Paul has not joined us. Uh, may I call out Dr. Satyabrata Satya Borua, Assistant Professor, Department of Education, B. Borua College. Uh, Sir Borua, I can see you. Uh, I would request you to kindly proceed with your presentation. Eric, good afternoon, all of you. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Sir, you are audible. You can begin your presentation. Uh, Ritu Sarkar, uh, may I request you to kindly mute yourself? I think my screen is also visible. Uh, so your screen is visible, but there is some background noise. I'm sorry to say you that I'm joining from actually Chennai. Uh, my mother okay, is in sir. a hospital. Uh, okay, that's why okay, sir. Can, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, it is a great yes, privilege sir. organizing committee for giving this opportunity to have uh, 
online platform otherwise i cannot join actually. yes sir, i understand that sir so please okay. continue okay so my presentation is issues and challenges of choice based credit system perspectives from uh, perceptions from guwahati university uh, we are accustomed to it, uh, choice based credit system more particularly in the undergraduate and postgraduate level and as per the ugc notification and suggestions the choice based credit system has been introduced uh, throughout the country and as per the guideline adopted by the ugc guwahati university has implemented this system uh, from the academic session 2019 across all disciplines uh, if we talk about the structure and process of the UG uh, CBCS program under Guwahati University, it is uh, followed by the structure that was <coughs> framed by the UGC. And we have accordingly uh, three types of different courses, core courses, elective courses, as well as, as well as ability enhancement courses. In ability enhancement course, we have two types of ability enhancement course, that is ability enhancement compulsory course, that is language and skill enhancement course. As we all uh, accustomed with this system, and uh, this uh, undergraduate degree uh, with honors, there are 14 uh, core papers in the discipline, two ability enhancement compulsory courses, two skill enhancement courses, and uh, four discipline specific course, and four generic elective paper. Uh, I would like to just uh, analyze the CBCS system on the basis of SWOC, that is the strength of CBCS. Uh, it is a very new approach, that is a category of the approach. Uh, specifically, students can choose their subject according to their interest. The credit system allows the student to study what he prefers based on his own interest. This, uh, this feature allows the student to utilize his free time and manipulate financial situations. Students can learn without rigidity of following fixed of subjects in each semester. Uh, this would help uh, them to know uh, work outside during certain semesters. Uh, students can opt for additional courses and can achieve more than the required credit. And students can also opt the interdisciplinary approach to learning. Talking about the weakness of CBCS, uh, less focus on credit for poor area or main subjects in certain circumstances. Uh, students are compelled to study languages in higher education level. That is the, another weakness, as I feel. And the students are compelled to be inside the classroom for the entire five hours per day schedule, uh, leaving no scope for independent study. When you talk about the opportunities of a CBCS system, uh, students can choose a paper outside of their core area so that they can be specialized in multidisciplinary. Secondly, the students have opportunity to take, take extra credit more than minimum requirement to complete the course which will be which is to encase future opportunities higher education grading are acceptable internationally so that students can complete international opportunities uh, credit transfer opportunity and possibility to taking different courses in different colleges simultaneously to complete the total credit requirement within minimum period. When you talk about the challenges for CBCS system, uh, first of all, when a new system arrives, there are maybe certain kind of uh, challenges in terms of academic as well as infrastructure. Accepting a uh, grade point in subject instead of marks and later grade instead of exact total marks is difficult due to the fact that allotment of individual ranking is not possible for merely referring grade point and later grades. An opportunity to take credit outside the core subjects area may dilute the depth of course area of studies and which is practically happening in most of the undergraduate CBCS courses. Students uh, may face a dilemma in choosing the subjects due to their inexperience in crediting future demand. Uh, practically, uh, 
I would like to mention one case study in my particular uh, department. That is uh, Ms. Tarasmita Nath, presently studying in BA fourth semester, uh, uh, fourth semester in Bibora College, Guwahati. Uh, due to uh, her some uh, physical problems, she did not appear for semester examination on time. As per the previous system, uh, she can appear that uh, appear uh, the said examination along with uh, the third semester. Uh, but the new system doesn't permit her to attend the same. As per the guideline of the Constitutional University, she can appear the first semester examination only after completion of her sixth semester examination. Means one year. Uh, totally, uh, one academic year will be uh, totally lost. Uh, why, uh, why it is happening, I don't know actually. Uh, after uh, implementation of CBC, uh, CBCS system, Gohati University uh, means uh, circulated this regulation uh, not to appear uh, first semester or any other uh, event semesters uh, uh, till she or he may complete her or his. Uh, final year examination and practically recently uh, i have also studied certain kind of attitude of the uh, attitude of the students or uh, regarding cbcs system or the new education system which is prevailing in our university uh, most of the cases uh, certain kind of negative attitudes they may be arised uh, due to certain uh, conditions it may be physical it may be academic or it may be other certain reasons uh, due to certain kind of awareness of the learner as well as the teachers. Actually, the sort uh, choice-based credit system is not uh, practicing in our universities that I feel. Because uh, choice, uh, the question of choice is sometimes uh, arise, choice for the students or choice for the uh, teachers. Uh, uh, because sometimes we uh, may not uh, provide certain kind of choices in the papers due to time constraint, as well as infrastructural facilities of our institutions. So I think there is a important, uh, it is the important time to exactly uh, soothe or to choice or to provide certain kind of adequate facilities to the learner. Otherwise, uh, as our resource person has told that empower, educate, or uh, means employable, employable quality may not be fulfilled through this system thank you thank you so much once again i would like to thank uh, the organizer for providing this virtual platform as i have mentioned i could not attend this seminar if this platform is not available in the right time uh, thank you sir uh, thank you for the pains that we have taken yes. to attend uh, this session uh, taking into account the problems that you are facing at personal level. Uh, so we have uh, Dr. Manisha Das and Thank Ms. Uh, Agnivina Brahma as the next uh, paper presenters. May I request uh, them to kindly present their paper? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yes. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, your screen yes, is your... visible. Your voice is audible. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, okay. Good afternoon to all present here. Uh, my name is Agni Vinar Brahma, a former student of <coughs> Department of Education, Dibrugar University. Today, I am with my joint author. Uh, Dr. Manisha Das, Assistant Professor of Department of Education, Dibrugarh University, are going to present a seminar paper. The title of our paper is Issues and Challenges Faced by PG Students, which is postgraduate students of Assam during COVID-19 with special reference to teaching learning process. So uh, as we know, the sudden outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic has changed the normal cycle of our life. The entire world was shut down for a period of time. The beginning of the pandemic has brought several consequences to the entire world. 
people were infected they are psychological and uh, emotional they were psychologically and emotionally unstable hello yes you are audible agni vina okay ma'am agni vina you are audible please go ahead okay, uh, in case there is a break in your voice i will let you know please don't okay. worry also uh, one of the most affected areas uh, was the education system especially higher education including research work the people of assam were also the victim of covid-19 pandemic as such the educational system especially higher education of the region had to suffer the post graduate students who were newly admitted at the time 2020 had to suffer a lot because of sudden shift from offline teaching learning mode to online teaching learning mode this sudden shift has impacted overall teaching learning process of the post graduate students of the entire world including assam so let me come to the rational of the study the study focuses on uh, finding out the issues and challenges faced by pg students of assam during covid-19 pandemic and also to bring out some solutions uh, to uh, to maintain the teaching learning uh, system smoothly and uh, it also try to examine whether digital technology has been fully utilized and is there more room to develop it for further educational exchange so next uh, here are some literatures which are reviewed by us uh, for preparing while preparing the paper and those are the objectives of the study uh, to number 1 to find out the issues and challenges faced by post graduate students of assam during covid-19 pandemic with special reference to teaching learning process and the second objective is to communicate the uh, probable solutions for handling these issues of, of higher education in future covid-19 like situations so the method methodology was a survey method we used while preparing this paper um the population was the, all the pg students studying in the universities of assam in the session 2020 mm. the sample uh, the study was conducted on 50 students from universities of all over assam we have used uh, for tool we have used open ended questionnaire an analysis was done to quantitatively here are some here are the findings we got from the study uh, due to the lack of time i will read out few of the findings uh, so first one is majority of students said that learning was quite difficult in online classes as the teacher skills wasn't better in online classes and majority of students uh, opened that uh, communication with the teachers and fellow mates was a big problem from students responses it is also revealed that network was also one of the reasons that cr created problems while learning the study also revealed that uneven attention to student also led them to not getting enough information in the classes uh, the study also revealed that although teacher maintained the classes in online platform yet students found difficulty in understanding the topics and online classes affected their learning habits or ability to some extent study also came up with the findings that is teacher skill wasn't satisfying as it failed to complete syllabus and understand students level of understanding overall online classes were not en enjoyable so let me come to the suggestion uh, students also suggested some of their part which is students offered suggestion like ict should be adopted in every mode of classes and should be accessible for every student students suggested that teaching learning process should be based on learning outcome necessary methods should be taken for every particular subject by the concerned teachers uh, students felt that teaching can be effective if proper example are given related to the topics discussed in the class students suggested that 
teachers should be more professional in terms of knowledge provider and personality use of ICT. Students also suggested that flexible learning environment, teamwork, group activities must be encouraged for active participation from student side. And they also suggested uh, that e-learning should be promoted. In the conclusion part, um, it is evident from the study that online class, offline classes are better as it improves knowledge and communication with friends and faculties. Yes, uh, to deal with COVID-19 like situations in near future, promotion of blended mode of learning or e-learning is the key. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Manisha, just a minute. Thank you for your nice presentation. Thank you, sir. I would like to invite Charusmita Mohanta and Dr. Dipali Datta for their joint paper. Are you present? So Charushmita Mohanta is present, I think. Uh, Madam, please, please respond. respond. Madam Charushita, kindly respond. respond. Then we go for next one. Uh, Kanchana Das, please. Are you are you there? Kanchana Das, I think she is. Okay. Now I would like to in invite Pramut Kumar Roy, research scholar. So I can see that they have joined. I can see their names in the participant list. I don't know why they are not responding. Sir Pramod Roy. Um, may we go for next? Dr. Jumi Kalita, are you hearing me? Hello. Jumi Kalita? Hello. Yes, yes. Am I audible? Yes, Jumi Kalita, please yeah, yeah. go forward. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Excuse me. Hello. Yes, audible. Yeah, sir, I am sir, present I here, but my, I have some problem. I am preparing. Hello. Sarushmita Mohanta, sir. Okay. I am present, sir, but I have some technical problem. Next, I, I will present. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, wait for. Hello. Hello. Jimmy, can I proceed? Is it feasible, sir? Yes. Nice. Thank you, sir. So I am Dr. Jimmy Kulita from uh, Loli Chandra Phali College, Maliga. Uh, with your permission from the dais, I am. Uh, I would like to present my paper titled Impact of Offline Teaching Learning Process in Higher Education a Statistical Study. Well, uh, we, uh, before COVID-19, we all are familiar with the offline uh, mode of teaching. But during COVID-19, the most uh, after the health sector, most worst affected area was the education sector. And that time, the to revive the disruptive uh, education system, online mode of teaching was uh, applied everywhere. So actually, uh, sorry. So what is uh, the online mode of teaching? It is actually the delivery of the instructions by the teachers to the students using different web-based technologies. In this system, students can participate 
in the learning activities beyond the campus at any time. Uh, in uh, our new education policy also, emphasizes on the online mode of teaching. From uh, the time of COVID-19, this mode of teaching uh, become popular within the ed uh, education system. Uh, but implementing, but in um, implementing this uh, mode of teaching, uh, we have to face some uh, problems from the students' corner as well as from the teachers' corner. Considering all these points, I have uh, started. I have st started the study with the objective uh, that to observe the various problems faced by the students in adopting this new method of teaching process, and at the same time, the effectiveness of the online teaching method from the student view. Uh, to fulfill uh, this uh, objective, to fulfill this, sorry, to fulfill this objective, I have collected uh, primary data from the students of two colleges of Guwahati, and I have collected a sample of 200 data using questionnaire method. And the, uh, to collect this primary data, I have uh, used the simple random sampling procedure. Besides this primary data, I have also collected some secondary data from some research papers and articles. After collection of data, I use the descriptive statistics method for analysis and to test the effectiveness of the method used by the teacher for, deli uh, for delivering their lectures, I used the chi-square test for attribution. And it is found that regarding participation, 60% of the students reported that they cannot avail the online teaching properly from their place due to network and power supply problems. And some of the uh, some of the students, uh, it was 22.5% uh, reported that uh, the equipment uh, due to the equipment they cannot avail the facility of online teaching. Regarding interaction, it is found that half of the students who attended the classes reported that they can do interaction with the teachers during their class. Regarding uh, concept clearance, it is found that approximately 60% of the students are in the opinion that concepts of the topics are not clear through this process. Regarding effectiveness, 43% of the students are in the opinion that the online mode of teaching is effective for them. And 20% of the students are agreed with the view that online mode of teaching can be replaced with the classroom teaching. And the remaining 23% uh, the remaining of the students are in the opinion that with some corrective measures, the online mode of teaching can be replaced. To test the effectiveness of the mode of teaching uh, by the teachers, I have uh, Use the chi square test with the null hypothesis that impact of online teaching is independent of tool and method used by the teacher. But at 5% probability level of significance, the, uh, the chi square test is found to be significant, and we have to reject our null hypothesis uh, with the conclusion that the impact of the online teaching is depends on the method or tool used by the teacher. It is, it is found that. The use of whiteboard or like that for explanation along with the live classes are better for the students to understand the topic and um, clear the concepts. With all these findings, I'd like to conclude and some give suggestions uh, with the following points. For effective education through online mode of teaching, the issue of poor network connectivity power supply and section of students belonging to the poor economic status should be addressed properly. State governments can take steps to ensure that every student has access to internet so that he or she is not deprived of education. Personal atten attention is another issue facing by the students in online learning process. And with corrective measure, uh, if corrective measures are taken, then the method of online teaching can be made a positive sense in the teaching procedure of our high, higher education. 
and the teacher's training is important so that they can deliver their lectures with explanation through online platform to facilitate students in a better way. The online mode of teaching had uh, various advantages. So um, therefore, in spite of all the shortcomings, online mode of teaching must be practiced along with the physical classes so that students become habituated with the technology and familiar in using digital platform. And in near, um, uh, near future, uh, our new education policy also emphasizes on online mode of teaching because uh, everything is going to be digitalized. And with this, uh, I'd like to conclude. And these are my references. OK, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Thank a you, very sir. nice presentation. Thank you, sir. And uh, next one, Charismita Mohanta. Charismita Mohanta, are you ready? May I promote Kumar Rai? Yes, sir. Please just wait for a while. Charismita Mohanta? I think there is some problem. Mr. Pramod Kumar Roy, are you ready for presentation? Yes, yes. Then go forward. Good afternoon, for all, sir. Sir, I am Pramod Kumar. I am a research and scholar of Singhania University, Bacheri Bari, Rajasthan. My topic, impact of COVID-19 on higher education. Introduction. On March 11, 2020, World Health Organization, Declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. COVID-19 has affected more than 4.5 million people worldwide. In India, the first affected case of COVID-19 was detected on 30 January 2020 in the state of Kerala, and the affected had a travel history from Wuhan, China. In India, the first death was reported on March 12, 2020. The nation observed Janta Karpi for a day on March 20, 20, March 22, 2020. India again observed 14 hours Janta Karpi on March 20, March 22, combat the coronavirus a pandemic and assess the country ability to hide the virus. Then the one phase of lockdown announced by the Prime Minister on March 25, 2024, 21 days. Maintaining the effect of the virus, Indian government has been attending the lockdown period in different ways. And lockdown 5.0 had declared on April 30 is affected from 1 June to 30 June 2020. In all of the I am yes. Mr. Roy, Mrs. Yes. I am interviewing you. Please go to the direct point, not what the introduction. Yes, sir. Yes. Objective the percent study of the focus and flowing activity, highlight of the various impact of COVID-19 on higher education sector. Enlightened various emerging approaches of India for higher education. In least post-COVID-19, a trend of higher education institute put a few suggestions for a continued education activity of higher education facing the challenges created by COVID-19, a quality enhancement and quality 
sustenance in higher education. The NEP 2020 emphasis on the aim of quality higher education in developing good, thoughtful, well rounded, and creative individual. The seminar aim of contributing productive idea towards energy, pedagogy, assessment, and student support, faculty development, interstitial inclusiveness, and equality as a quality enhancement factors in the higher education. Methodology. In this paper, we have studied various reports of national and international agency of COVID-19 pandemic are a search to collect the data current. As it possible to go outside for data collection due to lockdown, information are collected from a different authoritative website, journals, and e-content. Paper related to impact of COVID-19 on higher educational system of India. So I can use the method of survey and investigation. Impact of higher education. Pandemic COVID-19 has various affected on the total education system in India as well as the global, but some of the most Im impacted er areas of higher education of India are pointed below. Detabilize all educational activity. Outbreak of COVID-19, a complete lockdown in every sector, including uh, education. The situation co close with case of educational activity and created many challenges for a stakeholder. Private 2020. So the various activity like admission, examination, entrance test, completely examination conducted by various board school, colleges, universities are postponed. Many entrance tests of higher study could cancel, which created greater challenges in the life of a student of higher education. The primary challenges why to continue teaching learning process. When a student, faculties, and a staff could not learn by physically present on the campus. The obvious solution for the institution was to depend on online teaching learning. However, within a relating short time, higher education institute has been able to provide support to a student through online mode. COVID-19 has... Mr. Roy. Mr. Roy, yes, come to your findings. Come to your findings. Yes, sir. Yes, the suggestion. The format that is generally flowed by internship research program has to be modified to suit the current situation. Methodology certification, assemble, and permanent have to be revised and shall be modified according to the requirement of the current situation, keeping in mind the quality benchmark. In order to extend the backbone of e-learning and the government should be deployed the necessary infrastructure and remote places where People do not have access to the internet, thereby fixing the internet gap, which would facilitate a student to learn digitally. digitally. Conclusion. The purpose of the education is to enable oneself to better the world in the which they live. Technology today has become need of an hour. It is difficult to imagine colleges and university education without the issue of digital resources which has provided different educational and academic information. 
However, it also necessary to understand that it should not reinforce the structure of power and inequality. It should not create digital divide between rich and poor. As we cannot expect in country like India to have the ability of all required resources due to different socio-economic conditions in India. Online mode of learning can be best mode of teaching if it can be assessed by all the sections of the society. However, it can pose that if certain sections of society cannot have held this facility and thus as closure, it is therefore important to take a conization of online education and plan for intervention that will provide greater inclusively connectivity and equality. It is important that college and university understand the experience and issues of the student and prepare according to further and design the study pattern in such a way that all students benefit. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you a lot. A uh, very nice paper. Um, and I am inviting Charu Smita Mohanjan. Yes, sir. Uh, with uh, Dr. Dipali Dutta. I think now you are ready to present. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, very good. Charasmita? Yes, yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, it is clear. Sir, have you seen? Have you seen my uh, yes, screen? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, it is clear. Yes, sir. Very good afternoon, uh, all of you, honorable chairperson, respected research person, and all of the dignitaries present here. I am Sarasmita Mohanta, uh, research scholar, MSSB, Nogao, Assam, and my paper is entitled as "Scenario of Higher Education of Women." in Dharam district of Assam, which special refers to Patharigat Revenue Circle. Introduction. Uh, education of a boy is the education of the person, and but education of girl is the education of entire family. So the education of women is the potential factor for the development of society and the nation as a whole. Uh, in the words of Pandit Nehru, uh, in order to awaken the people, it is the women who has the who has to be awakened. Once she is in on move, the family moves, the village moves, the nation moves. Uh, these are the importance of higher education. Higher education of women is very essential as women have had significant contributions in the progress of every country. Higher education helps uh, the women to know their inner potentialities through which they can able to lead their family and society strongly. Higher educated women have the self-confidence and they have the ability to solve their day-to-day -day problems. And higher education also makes them economically independent. Uh, so significance of the study, uh, parental attitude have a great impact on higher education of women in their enrollment and achievement in the institutions. Attitude of parents is a measure or an index of parental involvement. It is seen that attitude of rural parents of Patrika revenue cycle of Torong district is not so favorable towards higher education of women at present also. They are not so much positive in this regard. It is observed that some parents believe investment of money on higher education of women means the wastage of that money. Better they can invest those money on their marriages. 
therefore it is an attempt to create awareness among the parents to our child education of women next area of the study the present study covers the pathorighat revenue circle of dorong district uh, 66 number of lsc this revenue circle has 95330 uh, 338 population uh, according to the census of 2011 where 48,921 are males and 46,417 are female population. Uh, this uh, circle comprises of 86 villages. Basically, cultivation is the sources of income of this area. Aims and objectives. Uh, mainly, there are two objectives for in this study. Uh, to know the attitude of rural parents towards higher education of women with special reference to Patharigat Revenue Circle of Dorong District, Assam, and to study the factors influencing the parents' attitude towards higher education of women. Hypothesis. It is, the, it is assumed that the attitude of rural parents towards higher education is not so favorable and it is also assumed that there exist various factors influencing the parents' attitude towards higher education of women. And then methodology. In this study, a skip to survey method has been followed uh, and the data uh, based on pure data primary and interview schedule and observation method has been followed uh, in the study by the investigator. Uh, these are the population. Population uh, of the present study comprises of the Patharigat Revenue Circle of District Dorong, consisting, uh, consisting of 86 villages. And sample, uh, the investigators selected randomly 10 villages from the Revenue Circle out of 86. And out of 10 villages, uh, again, uh, 10 households have been approached in each of the villages. And hence, the number of parents a process is 100 households. These are the sample villages. 10 villages are there. Parampur, Boragipara, Duni, Koykora, Komargaon, Karukhapara, Naptapara, Niranshuba, Patidorong, and Turai. These are the total households of these villages. Okay, okay madam. Skip it. Skip this slide. Okay. okay, sir. These are tools of data collection. Uh, in the self-development interview schedule uh, has been... Uh, followed by the investigator and for construction of the interview schedule the investigator made 10 st statements for parental attitude and five dimension of factors which influences the attitude of parents towards higher education of women the sources primary data uh, for the present study, primary data has been collected by the investigator to physically visited the area. All of the Gaon person helps the investigator. An interview schedule and observation method used by the investigator for the selected sample of the study and secondary data collected from various books and articles of journals. These are the analysis and interpretation. These are the statements. Ten statements are there and the respondent sample. These are percentage. Graphical representation of the data. Next, factors influencing the parental attitude. These are the five dimensions. Lack of awareness of parents, financial position, conservative outlook, preference of male child, and transportation and communication. And this is the graphical representation of the data. Next, measure findings, objective one. Uh, from the study, uh, it is found that the attitude of rural parents towards higher education of women is not so favorable in the study area. It is also observed that mostly uh, the parents of the study is financial not sound. They cannot provide financial facilities to the girls for higher education. Hence, if they can provide the certain facilities, the preference will be given to the male child by the parents. The study also found that investment in higher education of women means the wastage of money. Majority of the parents were very conscious about the marriage of girls rather than the higher education of women. A maximum number of parents have no idea that development of a nation depends upon the higher education of women. Next measure of objective number two, it is found that the attitude of parents totally influenced by the economic conditions of parents. The study reveals that uh, though the parents have the interest to the higher education of women, yet they cannot able to provide the facility to the women students. And also observe that uh, the study had that uh, most of the parents are not aware about the higher education of women. 
the mindset of the parents of the study area till now not free from the conservative outlook and they prefer the male child. Uh, it is also founded from the study that transportation and communication system is not so uh, favorable uh, for the higher education. And the conclusion, uh, so everybody knows that women are the essential segment of every society. They have the prominent role in the progress or development of every society. Uh, but in the study, I found that the attitude of parents of the study area is not so favorable, not positive, so positive towards the higher education of women. There are some factors which have been influencing the attitude of parents towards higher education of women. And parents are aware about the higher education of women in some area, but they have no sufficient financial support uh, for investment in the higher education of women. And uh, uh, women students are not getting the sufficient facilities for higher education. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, yes, next one, Megha Chaudhary and Nidarshan Nandan Kaushik. Are you listening me? Megha Chaudhary. Good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, no, very good. Okay, sir. I would just like to present my screen. I Is want it to visible? say, after this, um, all this paper, uh, completion of this paper presentation, uh, we will discuss if any uh, query you may ask to the presenter. So the pre question hour will be after the presentation. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is visible. It is clear. OK. Good afternoon to everyone present here. Uh, I am presenting this paper with my co-author, Nidarshan Nandan Kaushik. And our topic is From Household Course to Online Education, the Struggle of Married Women Pursuing Higher Education During COVID-19. Education helps an individual to grow learn and nourish in several ways it is a key to better life which opens up pathways to varied job opportunities improved economic conditions and ultimately a good life however there have been differences between men and women in terms of accessibility and equity of education Traditionally, women have been assigned the role of caregivers and deemed fit to take up the household responsibility, whereas men have been assigned the role of breadwinners of the family. In a country where patriarchy is deeply embedded in the culture, this has uh, emerged as the simplest way to gain control of positions of authority. Girls and women often find themselves in a chaotic situation of trying to balance household responsibilities, Megha, which Megha? are deemed to be their social role. Yes, ma'am. Megha, your slides are not moving. Your slides are not moving. Uh, ma'am, yes, this is the first slide. Hello. Okay, Megha, please continue. I think you have moved beyond the first slide. You're not moving, but. Please continue, Mega. Anyway. Okay. So um, they often find themselves in a chaotic situation of trying to balance household responsibilities, which are deemed to be their social role and educational re uh, requirements. While women in general face a lot of challenges in managing their educational responsibilities, it becomes even more challenging for a married woman as she has to juggle between the caregiving responsibilities towards her family and the educational responsibilities as and when necessary. Obtaining higher education. A higher education is a distinct dream for many married women who are prone to time poverty. Many times it is seen that motherly responsibilities come up in the early years of marriage, which makes the pathway of education even more arduous. Sometimes women were forced to make tough decisions like moving out from a joint family setup to a nuclear one or to move to a new place where the institution was situated or even moving to her parents' house. 
Therefore, it is necessary to understand the points of difficulty faced by these women and to address the same so as to facilitate accessible and affordable higher education opportunities for these women. Traditionally, the classroom method has been prevalent in these institutions with a chalkboard as the primary tool. Gradually, with the onset of the COVID-19, the online mode of teaching was adopted because of the need of maintaining social distancing amongst the masses to contain the virus. The lack of devices and poor internet facilities and know-how made things difficult for the women. Women belonging to the lower strata also found it difficult to cope with online education compared to the ones with better economic conditions. Now, I would like to focus on the background of higher education system in India and specifically in Assam. Assam is the hub for higher education in Northeast India with two central universities, 14 state universities and more than 300 government provincialized colleges. The gross enrollment ratio in higher education has been registering a sharp decline compared to the primary and secondary levels of education. Against this backdrop, it is essential to understand the significant challenges faced by married women. In Indian society, marriages often lead to girls and young women dropping out of school. Enrolling in an educational institution is a far distant dream for many women in India. Furthermore, those women who succeed to get enrolled in higher education institute find it difficult to fulfill, the, fulfill their educational requirements due to household responsibilities. More so, technical courses and doctoral courses demand individuals to spend more time in the laboratory or in the field, which is a constraint for married women, especially ones with children. The government of Assam has introduced various schemes for promoting higher education amongst masses, specifically among the women. Dealing with the scenario of higher education during COVID-19, I would like to point out that the disruption caused by the current COVID-19 pandemic is unprecedented, and it has resulted in economic and social measures. To elevate the spread of virus, the government around the world have imposed social distancing measures, lockdowns, and termination of personal contact outside immediate households. The pandemic is thus having an enormous effect on the educational activities. In matter of weeks, entire education system from elementary to higher education had completely transformed activity and evolved into an online teaching learning scenario. According to UNESCO, higher education institutions were closed completely in 185 countries in April 2020, affecting more than 1,000 1, million learners across the globe. As a direct consequence of social distancing efforts imposed by COVID and to maintain service during the emergency, universities have experienced a large-scale transmission to the online learning. In a short period of time, academics around the world have had to convert materials and methods rapidly to a format that is suitable for online delivery. This transformation was hasty and compelled by circumstances. The pandemic forced a period of global experimentation with remote teaching. Some studies refer to this as a new system of emergency online education. This system posed Madam, major I'm challenges. Madam, yes, sir. Please go to the result section. Okay. As well as the conclusion. Right, sir. Uh, in short, I would like to point out the research methodology uh, for uh, understanding the experiences of married women here in Assam. We have sampled 10 women using the snowball sampling method from Guwahati City and all around Northeast India. And uh, we have used the semi-structured telephonic interviews where we tried to understand the point of view of these married women without influencing or uh, uh, taking into account any kind of prejudice from our side. So uh, while analyzing this, we understood that uh, 
the household structures of have actually impacted the individuals because the family relations have had a very uh, striking impact on the individual during their uh, during the covid pandemic time even one of our interviewees who was uh, pursuing her phd from a reputed university reported that it was only after marriage that she could complete her masters and start pursuing doctorate a majority of women that we interviewed felt that a nuclear family structure was better for pursuing their education education with the authority of decision making entrusted to young couples these marital homes uh, provided a safer and more more uh, liberating atmosphere of the for the women a major hindrance in the attainment of education post marriage is also child bearing the uh, timing of this life event was deemed substantial in shaping a women's life course most women opined that their their husbands provided a sturdy support system but the presence of in-laws negatively altered their behavior during the time of covid-19 internal family beliefs and rules reflecting the macro social and cultural norms continued to impact women's lived experiences in uh, to conclude the same i would like to point out that the pathway of receiving education has always been difficult for women compared to males from time immemorial the double burden of work makes it difficult for women to fulfill their educational responsibilities they are forced to drop out due to various reasons like gender inequality social discrimination early marriage household responsibilities including child care responsibilities economic issues etc A well-known African proverb reads that if you educate a man you educate an individual but if you educate a woman you educate a nation the government needs to take proactive steps in order to facilitate smooth accessible and equitable education for all citizens most specifically the government should emphasize on different egalitarian policies which can reduce the gender gap and digital divide special emphasis has to be laid on providing the necessary assistance to married women considering their load of responsibilities thank you so much for your time and this platform thank you thank you mega choudhary thank you sir uh, few of presenter they have not joined us uh himani medhi pranita patwari suchitra shyam utpal dev sharma pankaj kalita uh, any one of this paper presenter is listening me himani medhi pranita yes. patwari suchitra yes, shyam utpal dev sharma and pankaj kalita any of one Yes, I am. Himani Medhi here. Himani Medhi. Himani Medhi. Sir, just uh, I am now connecting with my mobile phone, so I have to connect the uh, Google Meet through uh, my laptop. So it will take few minutes. while himani medhi makes the connection i would like to uh, once again call up the names of those paper presenters uh, who have not joined earlier uh, maybe they are here now anupam borguhai arpita de dr golap panging and and rupjyoti duwari dr saptarshi paul and uh, kanjana das if any of you are here if any of the paper presenters are here kindly respond so that we can accordingly assign you uh, after this presentation madam himani are you ready ma'am please allow my laptop to join
Hello, ma'am. Yes. Do you need a permission? Are you waiting for the permission? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just wait. Uh, I think you you can join Himani. It is open. Uh, Himani Medhi, your screen was visible. Now it's gone, but Ma'am, is it visible? Yes, Imani, it's visible, but there is an echo in the background. You are visible, Imani, your screen is visible. I think there is any some problem, technical problem. We may go for next one. Please, uh, Shradashri, announce the left participant's name. So I have called out once. Let me call out once again. This is for the final time that I would be calling out the names of participants who have not uh, presented. Anupam Borgohai, Arpita De, Golab Panging, and Rubyuti Duori. Dr. Saptarshi Paul, Kanchana, and uh, Kanchana Das. I don't think any of them are present, sir. So, this is the last presentation that we have, the last paper. Uh, Himani Medhi, uh, kindly proceed with the presentation. Please unmute, madam. Hello, ma'am. No, yes, it is now. It is audible.
is it audible now sir sir yes please start okay so my name is dr himani nidhi uh, i am going to present on the topic uh, ict enabled teaching learning approach a boon for effective management of classroom ecosystem so before that i we have already know about what is conventional method conventional method uh, which has the characteristics laid out over here um, we are already know about the conventional method uh, it is only for learning from memorization learning is abstract learning is theoretical teacher decides the course of learning then interaction among students is less good behavior based on intrinsic motivation then uh, these are the conventional method strategies the uh, seat work student learn through listening and observing lecture method discussion method and memorization so these are the advantages and disadvantages of conventional method so we are already know about that and uh, i just moving on to my next slide a uh, non conventional method or the modern teaching learning approach modern teaching learning approach uh, commonly known as the innovative modern teaching a method that involves the use of technology animation special effects and are generally learner self directed and interactive in nature the information and communication technology has made many inventions in the field of teaching and also made a drastic change from the old paradigm of teaching and learning method and is and the demand has increased with emerging of covid-19 pandemic the modern teaching method is effective because the learner learns through sociable interactive environment and becomes independent learner and becomes independent learner and this is the preference where i have gone through then uh these are the uh, non conventional method uh, teaching method approaches flipped classroom projects then computer assisted method of teaching peer assisted learning problem based learning then team based learning and small group discussion learning uh here in this presentation i mean i am going to mainly focus on the uh, computer assisted method of teaching uh, where uh, specifically some tools have uh, i am going to be discussed there are some tools like genomeo quizzes and net puzzle which are freely accessible for teachers they can use this uh, app and uh, can implement in the in their classroom uh, genomeo uh, enable teachers to prepare a particular uh, topic uh, their presentation and their uh, specific descriptions or notes they can prepare module here and uh, they can uh, provide the students to learn and study in home itself then quizzes and it puzzle give interactive session where uh, which a particular topic they are going through uh, that a, a, a teacher can uh, teach them through some quizzes within the some presentation and uh, in it puzzle also some uh, presentations can be made within which some quiz or questions can be incorporated and the uh, students can learn by uh, visualizing the presentation along with solving the questions so a brief uh, description i am going to show uh, here uh, i have already uh, open up my genomeo module uh, here my courses i have already uh, prepared that one one is carbohydrate molecule for category 1 students that means uh, for whatever uh, i had just 
give it a name category 1 and this is the protein and their structure functioning uh, and their functioning and denaturation let's go start with this here uh, i have uh, prepared the topic protein and their structure here uh, the topic name is protein their structure functioning and importance uh, here uh, i have uh, divided this uh, topic into some small lessons uh, number 1 is introduction and overview of the protein structure then functioning of protein molecules then denaturation of protein so in the first topic introduction and overview of protein molecules here i have uh, added an add puzzle uh, uh video presentation here where uh, i have added questions using the add puzzle app and let us see the presentation Uh, ma'am uh, could you please uh, come up with the findings that you know how it uh, it was beneficial to you if you could talk about that you know instead of uh, elaborating uh, that would be uh, that is necessary because we are already running short of time ma'am okay okay ma'am yeah uh, like what benefits you have derived uh, by making use of the technologies okay okay ma'am got it so uh genomio enables us to prepare a particular topic uh, uh as like uh, we have already know about the swam courses there uh, some courses are uh, made and then uh, for particular topics some sub topics are there and according to the lessons are uh, uh, presented by the teachers so genomio enables us to prepare such kind of modules uh, for students and uh, this helps the students not learn, not only learn in the teaching classroom as well as uh, in their home also but uh, the implementation or uh, the findings of the uh, particular this module can be uh, assessed or can be analyzed with the help of these two another tools which are the quizzes and the add puzzle at puzzle enables us to uh, add questions within the presentation and uh, quizzes helps us to create some quizzes uh, and uh, uh, provide this assign the students for their uh, grabbed knowledge uh, to uh, analyze the their grabbed knowledge so these are the tools here are some other more tools uh, but in this uh, paper or in this uh, presentation i am i have just discussed about this three only so these are the uh, advantages of the conventional and uh, non conventional methods and disadvantages of the non conventional method so next uh, uh conventional method and ict enabled method which is a non conventional method these have the uh, differences that it uh, go uh, it direct instruction it based on direct instruction and lecture method and uh, the conventional method uh, in the con conventional method uh, students learn through listening and observing while in ict enabled method hands on activities are there uh, through which they can learn by themselves uh, as we have gone through the quizzes and at puzzle uh, app uh, then student lead discovery by themselves and then uh, group activities are also there so they can learn in group activities also so conclusion is that a blended teaching learning method with the use of 
ICT tools and applications has a scope of enhancing the outcome of institution. So we can conclude as that uh, ICT enabled teaching learning approach can boon effective management of classroom ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Himani, madam. It was a very interesting presentation, but uh, unfortunately, because of time constraints, we could not, uh, yes, you know, uh, yes, yes, you could not make it an elaborate one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, yes. And uh, I'm very hopeful that once the conference proceedings are published, all the paper presenters would have a will definitely have a chance to go through your paper. And I'm very happy that you have brought out this issue on how we, you know, we should update ourselves by making use of these tools that are available. Uh, yes. So because we're talking of quality enhancement and how to sustain quality in this seminar, I'm very happy that you have come up with this paper, yes. madam. Thank you so much. Uh, now, uh, I uh, request uh, the paper presenters and other participants who are present here uh, to kindly interact. The session is open for interaction. Uh, any responses, questions, discussion, or insights uh, are highly welcome. Uh, please, participants. Uh, okay, uh, if there are no questions, uh, I just had a uh, had an observation, or rather a response, after listening to all the papers. Mm, uh, this issue was uh, raised by many presenters. Uh, Madam Jumi Kollita had raised it. Priya Mundra had raised it. Uh, Madam Ritu Sarkar, Pramod Roy, so, uh, that uh, all of uh, them were talking of this digital divide. And we know that the NEP 2020 is a vision document. And uh, it is uh, we are the implementers. So as a frontline educator, it is my duty. It is your duty. It is every one of it is a duty of every one of us uh, to implement uh, the, the the vision that is included in NEP 2020. So one problem that uh, I have faced, and I think that most of us, all of us who are here might have faced, uh, must have faced rather, is that, uh, you know, uh, how, what, uh, because it is a vision document, what implementation strategies are being adopted to lessen this digital divide? Because in times of pandemic, uh, when we were forced to kind of uh, shift to the online mode, uh, I have nothing against the online mode. It is the need of the R. Uh, but when, when we had to shift to the online mode, uh, we, we saw that all the students could not uh, derive equal benefits out of it because of uh, problem of the problems in you know their their uh, location their geographic locations students who were in remote places could not have access to that some did not have smartphones so until the economic divide is uh, lessened uh, erased effaced it is not possible uh, to uh, remove this digital divide as well on one hand uh, again so what is the way forward what strategies should we be, uh, you know, adopting and adapting as well as uh, our resource person had also said in his uh, lecture. So uh, how, how do we move uh, beyond uh, this issue to make education more inclusive rather than exclusive? So this is uh, a point. This is an issue that I was thinking about uh, after listening to all the papers. So anyone, uh, any participant who might be interested in responding to this can respond. Uh, I would be happy to uh, have uh, a dialogue uh, from your side as well. One feedback form is also circulated. Please look the feedback form. Yes, the, the feedback link has been generated and it has been shared in the chat box. So we would also like to uh, listen from you that uh, of your experience in this online session. Kindly fill it up. Okay. 
Okay, uh, if there are no more responses, no more questions, uh, would like to wind up the session with due permission from the chairperson. Uh, we had a very uh, we had a very engaging session. Uh, all the papers were very resourceful. Uh, the the participation uh, was uh, very good. There was a lot of uh, you know meaningful ideas getting generated, and there was a lot of takeaway from uh, this session. The presentations were interesting. But as all good things come to an end, uh, so must this session. I would like to formally thank the chairperson and the resource person of this session for having led the talks in such a vibrant and engaging manner. Uh, thank you, Kushre sir. And thank you so very much, Dr. Krishan Kant Gupta ji, though uh, he uh, informed me that he had to get engaged in some urgent meeting. So at present, he is not here logged in. Uh, and a uh, hearty thanks to all the participants. It is your participation that has made possible uh, this online session here. Uh, I once again thank you all, and we hope to meet you all again in near future. Morigao College would be very happy to collaborate and cooperate with your esteemed institutions in matters of academic interest. Thank you again, and wish you all the best of health and uh, academic prosperity. Thank you so much. And uh, one request uh, to all the paper presenters who have presented it online, please do not leave the WhatsApp group until and unless we have received your certificates. Uh, how the certificates would be sent and what we would do about it, we will uh, communicate to you in the WhatsApp group. So uh, till then, do not leave the group. It's a request from our side, because otherwise it would be difficult for us to, uh, uh, to kind of communicate with you. Uh, thank you so much once again, and we would be really happy if you fill up the feedback form and submit it. Thank you so much. So uh, on that note again, uh, let us wind, wind up the session. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Pratish. <laughs>